nerderotic.com. Greetings everyone, and welcome to the Chill Stream. My name is Gary Beekler. I come to you from nerdrotic.com, and I am live in San Francisco, California, where we are practicing social defecating. Social defecating, that's right, everybody. Uh, I hope you're doing well. This is a Chill Stream, and I have something to read to you at the beginning. From what should be Sir Douglas Adams, and we're going to talk about careless talk. And Arthur Dent did say, I seem to have a tremendous, I'm see, I seem to be having a tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle. Careless talk. It is, of course, well known that careless talk costs lives, but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, a human named Arthur Dent, who because of a Vogon constructor fleet, was one of the last two humans in the universe at the time, once said, I seem to be having a tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle. At that very moment that Arthur said this, a freak wormhole opened up in the fabric of the space-time continuum and carried his words far, far back in time, across almost infinite reaches of space to a distant galaxy where a strange and warlike beings where strange and warlike beings were poised on the brink of frightful interstellar battle. The two opposing leaders were meeting for the last time. A dreadful silence fell across the conference table as the commander of the Vlahergs, resplendent in his black jeweled battle shorts, gazed levelly at the Gavantan leader squaddled opposite from him in a cloud of green sweet-smelling steam. And, with a million sleek and horrible, beweaponed star cruisers poised to unleash electric death at his single word of command, challenged the vile creature to take back what he had said about his mother. The creature stirred in his sickly, broiling vapor, and at that very moment the words, I seem to be having a tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle, drifted across the conference table. Unfortunately, in the Vlaherg tongue, that was the most dreadful insult imaginable, and there was nothing for it but to wage terrible war for centuries. Eventually, of course, after the galaxy had been decimated over a few thousand years, it was realized that the whole thing had been a ghastly mistake. And so the two opposing battle fleets settled their few remaining differences in order to launch a joint attack on our own galaxy, now positively identified as the source of the offending remark. For thousands more years, the mighty ships tore across the empty wastes of space and finally dived screaming on the first planet they came across, which happened to be Earth, when due to a terrible miscalculation of scale, the entire battle fleet was accidentally swallowed by a small dog. 
Those who study complex the complex interplay of cause and effects effect in history of the universe say that this sort of thing is going on all the time, but that we are powerless to prevent it. It's just life, they say. Greetings, everyone. I butchered that a little bit, but who cares? I have more to read later. This is a chill stream. So uh, we could talk about whatever. Uh, we could talk about the things we like. I'm just going to ramble on for a little while. Probably uh, do the, some Super Chat Square Up later, but that will unchill the stream when we get back because that's left over from Friday Night Tights. And then uh, do a proper, uh, you know, we'll see how much we get done tonight. We'll see how we go. Maybe we can get it done. Usually those take about half hour, 45 minutes. It's a Q&A, but I want to give them the proper time that they deserve. Uh, don't really want to, until we get to the Q&A, putting the culture war aside for a moment uh, so we can just hang out and talk because I have a channel and I can do that. And I, ne I needed to take a break uh, from my Picard review which is uh, going to take a while. It's going to take a while. I'm taking my time with this one. And you know what? If people have completely forgotten about the show uh, by the time it comes out, so be it. So be it. Uh, I figure I sp I'm spending time watching it twice. Uh, Picard deserves to get eviscerated uh, properly. Uh, but uh, how are you? Let's see who's here. Let's see who's here. Uh, went outside, uh, practiced social distancing. I just, we went to a drive through So usually it's it's date night for Mrs. Nerdrotic and I. That's why I usually don't live stream on Saturday. But it's a date day every day now. Uh, we're, we're at home and we're doing just fine. Uh, Mrs. Nerdrotic is making little color packets for her clients. And then she goes to her salon and puts them in like a bag or a box. And she notifies the, uh, per, her client. Then she hangs them on a hook outside her garage door. And, uh, they pay, I guess, via Venmo or something like that. And they never make contact and they swing by and pick it up. It's drive through hair salon. It's a drive through hair salon. I think she's got something there. I do. Warren Smith is here. Rock Flanagan is here. Emperor Billy Ritchie. Steve the YYZ. Just G. Ticket Man Blade. Kevin Ares. And Generial One. Non-Stick Pansexual. Mando Merc. Morb357. Fizz Fop One. Uh, Draken. Okay, how am I supposed to say this? Draconides the Vigilant. Am I saying that right? Draconides the Vigilant. RR. Space Invader, Vien Anakin, Stephen Ostecki, Ostecki, I want to say that right, Robert C., the Green Laser, George Turner, according to Christy, is here with a wrench. Greetings, Christy. Uh, yeah, sorry, I started later tonight, but I saw Jeremy was streaming, so I don't want to step on that. Uh, David Gill, Nano Reaper, Trace Adams, Brian Schiller, Major Doggo, don't forget to pet your doggo. Sharon L. Draws and Mando Merck. Oh, I've said that twice. And Andrew Banishers. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. So I haven't been able to catch up on much. I recorded a comic book video today, and I'm looking at it right now. And I wasn't sure if I was going to release it or not. I'm still kind of weighing on it. I do that all the time, by the way. There's a lot of videos. Maybe I should just give those to my patrons. I don't know. There's a lot of videos you don't see that I'll record and go, doesn't make the cut. It doesn't make the cut. Uh, I guess I could put it on Nerd Roddick Live, uh, but we'll see. I have to look at it. I have to sleep on it and look at it tomorrow morning, and we'll see if I like it or not. Uh, it's about Marvel putting their pencils down and consequences, and I found an old interview with a, with a Marvel creator that... Uh, I think a lot of the uh, people who are not in the comic book industry will, will find that enlightening. Um, but I haven't watched Lord of the Rings yet. I need to just sit down for a day and watch, uh, watch it again for the hundredth time. Uh, because it would be nice to cleanse the palate after Doctor Who and Star Trek Picard. 
Uh, I have managed to watch a couple of Doctor Who episodes. That was nice. Uh, I, I went back to a couple of my favorites. Uh, so I watched um, uh, The Family of Blood. And I watched... Uh, why am I blanking on the name now? God damn it. Oh my God, I hate that. I hate it when I do that. I watched this episode earlier today and it just... A live stream brain fart is a real thing. Oh my God. I'll remember it in a second. I'll remember what episode I watched today in a second. God, I hate it when that happens. Uh, Lord of the Barebacks. Uh, Netflix just removed it. Just removed what? What did they just remove? Uh, you know, um, what, oh, Blade Runner, right? Didn't they just remove Blade Runner? Uh, that's a terrible thing. Where is it going to go now? How are you going to be able to watch Blade Runner? God damn it. See, that's what happens when you get old. That's a scary thing. That is a scary thing when, uh, and, and that's been happening. Mm, when did it start happening with me? Probably in my early forties. I'm 50 by the way. Uh, so in my early forties and who knows, this could have been due to a lot of, uh, the, the drugs I did in the eighties, which I mean, it probably was, uh, because I did a lot of hallucinogens. I dropped a lot, a lot of acid, like a lot. Um, and yeah, there are, there are times when names of family members haven't done it with my kids yet, but like cousins, uh, some of Melissa's cousins where they, I mean, these are people I'll have just talked to on the phone a couple of days ago. And then I can't remember their name for like, you know, it's like a short period of time. It's like, like 10 or 20 minutes and then it'll hit me. And yeah, I'm like, Oh shite. What's that? Uh, now it, it happens once in a while, big deal, but it happens to me on the regular now, uh, probably eh, once or twice a week. So maybe I should be worried. I'm not that worried about it. It's just annoying when it happens when you're on a live stream and you just watched utopia and you can't remember the name utopia. It was like right on the tip of my tongue and it wasn't there. Damn it. So yeah, maybe that's something I should worry about sometime. But, uh, you know, I always figured when I was young, uh, when I, when I did all of those drugs that I wasn't going to live this long anyway, I never expected to live to 50. So every day's a gift, I guess. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah, it was weird out today. We went to a drive through and the in and out line was stupid long. Like, uh, you know, you don't know the area where I live, but there's an in and out that's about a half a mile off a freeway. The line went to the freeway, <laughs> to the freeway, to the freeway it was the longest friggin' line I've ever seen of cars. Uh, it moved pretty quick, but, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, everything we do is a drug. Well, yeah, kind of because your experiences are, uh, are chemical. At least that's how the scientists like to break it down. Uh, maybe that's just a way for them to figure it out. Who really knows? Who really knows? Maybe some brain surgeons. I am definitely not one of those. That is a fact. That is a fact. So, um, yeah, you know, this is like no uh, different. Uh, you know, my live streams that you see uh, daily at this point, uh, zero prep. I just start talking. Uh, like last night, uh, last night's Friday Night Tights was great, by the way. Was, if I do say so myself, that was a good show. And, yeah, we we got together about, I don't know, five or 10 minutes before the show started, had a little chit chat 
and which we probably could have aired. Uh, we don't really say anything we can't air. And we got going. We did. Yeah. Uh, as I was listening to my, uh, my little theme song, by the way, it's called Beam Me Up. Uh, you can find it on the YouTube free uh, library. I was thinking, oh, man, I wish I need to ask uh, like somebody like Abu Nas to, to lay something down over that. It needs some lyrics. It needs some lyrics, but not for me. Abu Nas, Doomcock, somebody who can either sing or or uh, or do a little hip hop. I don't know. I can't do anything. I can play bass, but that's not going to help that song at all. Um, so I have been uh, in my downtime. I haven't been watching a lot of Lord of the Rings, but I've been going back to some of my favorites. And unfortunately, I still like A Song of Ice and Fire. I'm still very much into that book series. And we did get some news from George R. R. Martin's Not a Blog on the Winds of Winter. Now, it's not major news, but it's some news. It's something. I want to make sure this is the right post. All right. So George is talking about being all locked down. Let's see if we can bring this up here. There we go. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. Hang on just a moment. There we go. That's better. That's much better. Um, I would rather, as a matter of fact, you know, at this point, I don't even want him writing this. All I want him to write is, I am working on Winds of Winter. Like, this is too much. Um, we all have projects we procrastinated on. Like my Star Trek Picard review. Probably should have been out Friday. I'll work on it for a couple hours. And then I need to stop because it's Star Trek Picard and it's bloody awful. But um, when I have like, a, if I had a multi-million dollar deal uh, and I had millions of people into my story and, it tie, and then one of the biggest TV shows in the world was based on my story and then it fell off a cliff because they were relying too much on my source material, which you can get mad at George about. And you can, I mean, you know, I go back and forth on that one. I think he's got some responsibility for sure. But Dan and Dave were the showrunners. They loved all those acc accolades. But when things got hot, whoo, they disappeared. Poof, kind of like Bob Iger. Damn near in the middle of the night. So let's go to George. George R. R. Martin's not, I'm going to, okay, I don't have my reading glasses on, so you're going to have to forgive me on this one. No fooling, April 2nd, 2020, 12.53 p.m. April is here. Though up where I am, there is still a lot more snow than flowers. Now, I have to say that I had an insider report to me a month ago that George R. R. Martin was in a secluded location in a state that is not where his home is. Um, and this location is where he usually goes to finish books. Now, that was prior to everything coming down, but maybe he knew what was up. I'm figuring a lot of the elites in the world, a lot of the rich folk, knew what was up before we did. Uh, I know some city government people in San Francisco did, so... Yeah. Uh, the weirdness continues all around the world. Sometimes it is hard to recall how much it has changed it Changed in just one month. Regular readers of my Not A Blog and the Wild Cards website know that I usually do an April Fool's post. We, ha uh, we have had some great ones over the years, even fooled a few people. Not this year, though. Uh, none of the ideas were playing with seemed quite appropriate with everything that was going on, or maybe I just wasn't feeling very funny. Science fiction writers are supposed to be good at predicting the future. That's a myth, actually, but never mind. But I have uh, to confess, I had I had no notion where or when any of this 
is going to end. I can, uh, I can see half a dozen branching alternatives, some of which are very grim indeed, and some are much less so. One does not want to do uh, to be alarmist, of course, but at the same time, it would be folly to be dismissive of the dangers. All we can do is, you know, shelter in place and do what we're going to do. So he talks about his uh, movie theater and his bookstore. Uh, he talks about mail order. Uh, he talks about autographed books. Uh, he says he is... Um, Talks about some postponed uh, conventions, which Comic-Con is not. Comic-Con is not. But then we get to the important part right here. Now, it's it's just news. It's not not anything great. But if there is a silver lining in these clouds, this will give me more time to finish Winds of Winter. I continue to write every day up here in my mountain fastness. Uh, So, and then he mentions some of the other books that have been pretty much uh, placeholders and trying to keep the fans happy while he procrastinates writing The Winds of Winter. Now, it has been, what was it, 2011, right? So we're looking at nine years. It's been nine years since the last book came out. Uh, He says he's anxious. That's his mood, is anxious. It's been nine years since the last book came out. Um, Now, there's supposed to be 3,000 manuscript pages between The Winds of Winter and A Dance with Dragons. So, 1,500 apiece. Uh, I, I would think that there's 365 days in a year, and if you just wrote one page a day, You'd be done in in under four years. Under four years. So it's been nine. So he's been writing a third of a page a day. (laughs) Uh, A page every other day. I don't know. Um, George, finish the damn book. If it doesn't get finished now, the fact that he's writing every day and he's like not close to finish. Remember, in 2015, he thought he would be close to finish. So I am thinking probably what you're thinking that he rewrote a lot of the book and I hope to hell he didn't rewrite it because of the current political climate prior to everything going on. Uh, I hope he stuck to his guns and sticks with his plans. As you know, he, the way he writes is uh, he lets the writing do, you know, it, it, he, he writes like a gardener, he says, uh, where he kind of knows where he's going to go, but then Uh, he'll come up with ideas while he's writing. And every time he comes up with an idea that's different, they have to go through and re-edit everything. As you know, or may not know, the books are written first person and there's six to seven to eight characters per book. And they all have separate stories. And he, so he's basically writing six or seven different novellas that go into a giant novel that are all going in the same direction. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant to read. It's fun. Uh, Even the dumb little side adventures that seem pointless aren't. Uh, Every chapter gives you context to the world. It builds the world. Uh, It sets up something else. Uh, You know, I'm a big fan of some of the characters they introduced later. uh, Just that he's barely introduced, but he's made them, you know, interesting enough. Like, uh, like Darkstar. And, um, of course, you're on Greyjoy who came in later and is just one of the best villains in the book. And I think it's more the idea of him. We don't have a ton of him in the story, but when he is in the book, he takes over the book. He makes Ramsey Bolton uh, look like a, you know, a grade school teacher makes Joffrey look like a kindergartner. Uh, He's bad. He's an evil, evil person. Um, and it's a great bad guy and he could be supernatural. He could be a former pupil of blood Raven. Who's the three eyed crow. Uh, and yeah, there's lots of theories. There's like, maybe I'll do a video on one someday. I'm going to have a lot of extra time in my hands and there's not a ton of, of news to cover other than things being shut down. You know, um, that's why I was like, eh, do I want to do another comic book video or not? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, it's decent. It'll, it'll, do fine. I just like, is it going to, you know, does it send a message? Does it, 
Does it do any good? Uh, does it entertain you for a little while? I don't know. These things, I don't know. Uh, I'd love to say that every one of my videos, I'm all, <laughs> yes, I did it. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. I wish it did. I wish it did. But let's get to what you guys to say. I have to say, and then maybe I'll read uh, one of my a couple of my favorite speeches from A Song of Ice and Fire and a couple of other things. But let's get to you guys. So um, I'm looking forward to the second season of Umbrella Academy. Game of Thrones compounds sand, says Alacrity uh, Fitchu. How do you say your first name? Alacrity. Alacrity. Uh, well. Yeah, the show can pound sand. I'll never watch it again. Uh, the show is completely ruined for me. I will never watch a second of that show again, but I am looking forward to season two of The Umbrella Academy. I just don't know if uh, if that was in the can or not. Uh, when was that due out? Let's take a look. Well, you know, the thing with Netflix is they suck at their marketing. I had no idea Lock and Key was out. I was watching uh, an... As I was watching Hills versus Babyface, and he said it was out. I'm like, oh, I'll watch it. With with Netflix, it's usually like a couple of years. So it began filming uh, in June of 2019. So yeah, it's done. They probably have some. Uh, oh well, we got an article an hour ago wow how's that for synchronicity how is that for synchronicity hang on i gotta get my uh my window squared up well, that's not going to do any good. Hang on. Well, just cover me for a second. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure you'll live. Umbrella Academy teases big change. New characters in season two. The composer for Netflix dystopian superhero series, The Umbrella Cow. Academy. Jeff Russo, who's a good composer, unfortunately, he worked on Picard, teases big changes for season two, including a new character. The composer for Netflix dystopian series, Jeff Russo, teases big changes, including a new setting and new characters. The series, which is an adaptation of a comic book created by Gerald Way and Gabriel Ba, and published by Dark Horse Comics, premiered on the streamer in February 2019. The show was very successful, and Netflix quickly renewed it for a second season. Russo composed the score for the both first and second season starring Ellen Page, blah, blah, blah. Things get crazy. When's it coming out, though? I don't care. I know. Th oh, wow. Is this? Did you make an article out of this, out of a guy saying, hey, things are going to be awesome and there's going to be characters in a TV show. And guess what? They're going to say words out loud and they'll vocalize these words that were written down on paper or possibly an iPad. And they're going to act and they're going to act in this show and it's going to have actors and I'm a composer, so I'll be playing music. What the fuck, man? Garbage access media articles. Somebody got paid for that. I'm sure that's what they say about YouTube. <laughs> uh, let's find out when season two is coming out. Uh... Uh, this was March 27th. It has been 13 long months since Netflix released the first season of the highly entertaining superhero drama, The Umbrella Academy. That's a long time to wait for new episodes, but uh, even by Netflix standards. Unfortunately, the wait will have to continue as the streaming service has yet to announce an official season two release date. Fortunately, showrunner Steve Blackman has a modest update to the... To satiate the hungry fans production wrapped up on the second season in november so the thing that shall not be named hasn't shut down filming the post-production process is apparently ongoing 
Uh, even with you know what, can't stop the Umbrella Academy mix, but I swear we're washing our hands, Blackman shared. So, yep, we've got a picture of them editing, and that was uh, a week ago. Uh, the image depicts Diego, number two, looking far shaggier than he did last time we saw him. Then again, the new look may be an attempt to better fit the surroundings. Remember, in season one, number five took himself and his siblings through time to avoid impending apocalypse. Perhaps they landed in the 70s, thus Diego's look. Uh, the truth is, we don't know where they are. Uh, da, da, da. You really want to... Boom. My guess is if they are still editing, it's a couple months away. Unless they're putting on final touches, I don't know. Uh, the thing is with Netflix, they never tell you. They just dump something and there you go. And maybe Netflix is... Well, I know they would be like this if they had, if they, if they were like a YouTuber, if you had a, uh, well, some YouTubers, not all YouTubers, but, um, if you have a video, uh, and you don't put them out every day, right? So if you have a video doing well, it gives you a little time to breathe so you can work on another one a little longer. That's all. So maybe with the, uh, what the hell's the tiger people or whatever the, I haven't watched the show yet. I, I'll, when I'm done with Picard, I'll watch it. Uh, maybe that, because that's so popular right now. I mean, they could probably, that probably carries the network for a little while and gives them time to refine something else, get something else together. Uh, for instance, the Witcher, I mean, we're probably not going to see the Witcher for two years now. Easy, which is too bad, which is too bad. All right. To you chat, to you. Uh, Brian Yoder sends a unicorn, uh, a, a nerdicorn with a dollar 49. Thank you for the nerdicorn, uh, the nerdicorn of the apocalypse. They are coming, uh, and they will spare no one, spare no one, uh, spreading their love. Uh, Von Doofus for a dollar 99 are the street poopers observing social distancing. Ah, as I said earlier, that's funny. You bring that up. Uh, they are observing social defecation. Uh, no, we, right now there are no homeless people on the streets. They have been gathered up and put on a UFO and taken to space. No, I have no idea what they've done uh, with them. There is a shelter here uh, somewhere. And I don't know what's going on. We... Uh, we're doing okay over here. I mean, it's not like New York. We're doing okay. We have cases, but it's not serious. Uh, I have been getting reports. Uh, this is for the exosome, but I've been getting reports from hospitals that they're fine. They're fine. I don't, you know, but it depends on the region. Honestly, it really does. Uh, Drury Nitpicker for four ninety nine. Hail Gary. I literally just got home from the TP Wars, aka work. Oh God. That is it still going on? People, they make toilet paper in America. Get canned foods. Canned foods. Yes. They have at Costco, where you work, is that where you are? They have giant, giant cans of chili. Buy them. That can feed you forever. Get as much ramen as you can. I mean, so that's the first thing I did, by the way. When... when when Tim Pool tried to push his uh, his food on one of his videos, uh, I did not go buy his food. I went on Amazon. Don't laugh at me. Oh, I don't care if you laugh at me. And I bought $300 worth of cup of soup. That's right. I bought $300 worth of cup of soup. Do you know how much goddamn cup of soup that is? Holy shit. I've got cup of soup for days. And you know what? I could probably wipe my booty with the packaging if I really need to. Or there's a thing called a shower. A shower. Or you can get a bidet. A bidet. Uh, Hail Gary, literally just got home from the TP Wars. How are things going in San Francisco? Have you seen any uh, computing forever vids on the situation? I have. Uh, Hail Dave Cullen, if you're out there. I love you, you ginge. I saw a Star Trek video today, which was great. 
uh, and I donated to his cause because I, uh, please check out Dave Cullen. He is, uh, there is some skullduggery going on with this platform, uh, because he takes on pretty tough topics that I don't. And I generally agree with the guy. Um, I, uh, I will say that my beliefs are pretty much in line with that ginge, uh, green lanterdo, uh, uh, the green lanterno you think it will get another film the green lanterno you mean the green lanterno uh oh i can't read it. it's okay um toxic man flu yeah it's gonna get a series on hbo max it's gonna get a series on hbo max they should and i'm not joking at all about this the two people they should talk to uh they should for one greg berlanti should just be signing checks the only thing Greg Berlanti should be doing is signing checks and then walking away. I don't want that guy to have any say on anything. I have seen multiple interviews with that guy. I've seen panels with that guy at Comic-Con. I don't know how he became the king of superheroes because he knows Jack Squat. But if you want that series to be good, and I am being serious, you talk to Jeff Johns and you talk to Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to both of them as creative consultants, and you might have a shot at having a good show. I would love to see a good Green Lantern show. I like my space superheroes. I like my cosmic superheroes. If I have, I don't have a favorite. I know there's like some people who like the street superheroes. You know, they just like Spider-Man and Daredevil and Luke Cage and, you know, and Elektra and, you know, the, the ones with, you know, maybe lower level powers. Uh, that are working the streets of New York. And I love those. I do. Daredevil's my favorite superhero. Absolute favorite superhero. It used to be Spider-Man, but then Dan Slott killed that dead for me. So now it is Daredevil. Um, but I love my spacey cosmic heroes. And I like the horror heroes too. The fringy weird heroes like uh, Brother Voodoo and Scarecrow and Son of Satan. And of course, Ghost Rider. I know that's not fringy. Uh, the Midnight Suns loved all that shit. Uh, Werewolf by Night, uh, Satana, uh, you love it all. Uh, Marvel Premiere uh, was one of my favorite Bronze Age books because uh, it was just weird. And of course, Jim Starlin is probably my favorite artist uh, back when he was in his prime, of course, when he was doing Warlock, The Power of Warlock, and the original male Captain Marvel with a dong, you know, the real one. Uh, Marvel. I can't believe what they did in the goddamn movie with Marvel. I I can Annette Benning, Annette Benning. Screw you, Marvel. Annette Benning. No wonder why Jim Starlin was pissed. I don't think he was really pissed about a book being similar to somebody else's at Marvel. I think he was pissed that he got screwed. Annette Benning. Ugh. Fury got his eye scratched out with a guy. This is supposed to be a chill stream. Sorry. I really like Jim Starlin. <laughs> um, Drury Nitpicker uh, says, thank you for all your hard work, man. Uh, you really are helping me through this stressful times. I'm thankful to be working, but it's nuts. Hail Gary. I can't imagine what it's, what it's like. I was watching that drive through today and I saw the kids in there and they look tired. Uh, and I'm sure they're happy to be working, but they look tired. Yeah, I hope it's all worth it. I do. I mean, listen, in the grand scheme of things, if this helps save a single life, I guess it's worth it. I guess it's worth it. But you have to think about the long term. How many lives are in danger in the future? Um, that's what I'm worried about. Think about the future, Jack. Doom's cock has become a member. Doom's cock from yesterday. Well named. Well met. <laughs> Doom's cock. That was so funny. Oh, I lost it a little bit on the stream last night. Uh, yeah, last night's stream was funny as hell. I'm, I'm wondering what clips will be taken out of that one and completely taken out of context. Um, oh my God. That, yeah, that whole... Uh, <laughs> that whole geeky candy thing. If you don't know, then I mean, I'll go very quick. Um, she was on 
Friday Night Tights three, four weeks ago, four weeks ago. And we, I was talking about overhearing somebody at my sponsor's work. My sponsor is a men's health physician. And I was, uh, that was one of the last public places I was, uh, where I was inside a building and I was talking to my sponsor and I overheard one of his coworkers who's a doctor say this out loud. Uh, they said, I hope the thing that shall not be named takes out all the old men who have screwed over this planet. And I'm like, what did you just say? And, um, and somehow that conversation sparked something then, uh, that Jeremy brought up about a tweet that I was not aware of the tweet. I wasn't aware of the context of the situation. I was just kind of listening to the story. And if you see in the live stream, Mrs. Nerdrotic comes in and starts talking to me through half of that. So I'm like, eh, like this. Uh, but uh, they were talking about a reporter who made a mistake uh, in math. And then she got, you know, she got roasted on Twitter. It's Twitter. And then she went back and again, I don't know what happened on Twitter. I don't know. I didn't go look it up and I'm not going to, I don't care. Uh, I just know that she, I guess wrote, I don't know if it was a blog or an article saying that a, a, a an ist mob came after her on Twitter. And I'm sure she heard some ist uh, comments cause it's Twitter. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And they were just describing the story and Geeky Candy described a person as African-American and somebody decided to make a live stream out of it. And then when they got called out, they called it an April Fool's and then they deleted everything. They deleted the video. Um, and it, it was something, I mean, it was just people on a live stream talking. And when we lot, we, we, we we're pulling shit out of our ass, we're moving. I'm looking at the comments and I'm looking at the bit rate and I'm counting, I'm looking at the viewers and I'm pulling up windows. I've got like nine of them pulled up right now. You know, we're doing, listen, it's not hard. I don't want to make it sound like it's hard. It's not, it's fun. It's lots of fun, but it's just people talking. This is, this is what we do. This is why live streaming is king. This is why I love it. It's the best thing ever in my life. Uh, well, you know, as far as entertainment, as far as hobbies, and as far as jobs, it's great. Uh, I've always wanted to work on talk radio, but I always hated the commercials, and now we got it without the commercials breaking everything up for 15 minutes. So, uh, it was taken out of context, and that was the entirety of the conversation, by the way. That was, it was it. I was bringing up that I overheard a woman at a workplace say she would wishing all met death to old men. Because, and she was, of course, referring to the orange man. Um, and I called her out on it right there. I'm like, I mean, how, you're a doctor. Do no harm. What the hell? Uh, yeah. And yeah, it made a little scene, but so what? You know, and uh, my sponsor didn't get on my ass because that's taking care of something. I wasn't completely disrespectful to her. I was just like, I can't, you know, how dare you? You know, think about this. That's, that's not a very compassionate thing to say. Uh, you don't want to be hearing that from a doctor. Uh, they apologized and, uh, you know, yeah, you just, you just deal with it. But th the context of what candy, I mean that you heard it, she just was describing a story and she described a person as African-American. Now, um, some people don't like being called that and I, and I understand that. And if they say, I don't like being called that, then I won't call that individual. I, I, I usually don't, I'll, I'll, I'll say black person if I have to describe somebody. But what I usually like to do is call them by their name, ask them their name. That's my thing. But when you're in the heat of a live stream and you're describing somebody, I'll say a Chinese guy or a Mexican guy. Uh, we mean absolutely nothing by it. We're just people talking and I don't play the political correct game anymore. I don't give a shit what people think. 
I don't care if I sound bad. I know what's in my heart. I will do my very best to be respectful at all times, except when I'm talking to Jar Jar Abrams or Rianne Johnson. Uh, and that's as hard as it's going to get. But generally, I am just going to talk and I'm not going to walk on eggshells around anybody because that is social tyranny. Now, there is a line, though. You got There's respect, which you always want to have towards people at first. Um, and, or, and me just talking, that's it. And trying to talk in a live stream, which I, for a second, couldn't do <laughs> right there. So, um, and we try to keep it light here and it was just Jeremy and Candace talking. She didn't mean anything by it at all. I will back her a thousand percent. I know her. She's nice. That shit's not in her heart and everybody else does too. Period. So we get, I mean, like I get the hate. Jeremy gets hate. Candace gets it. Everybody gets it. Uh, it's part of YouTube. It's part of the game here on the internet. If you can't handle it, put on a helmet or go home. That's all. So that was the entirety of the conversation though. There wasn't any before or after or things leading up to it. They just told that story and it was over. So I don't know. Uh, I, I heard that, that some people said she said more than that. She didn't, uh, because I went back and I watched the live stream today, uh, and I went over it. And if you want to go over it yourself, it is at, oh my God, I had the timestamp. Remember, uh, it was about, I'll have to double check the timestamp. I can probably pull it up, but it's uh, four weeks ago and there, is, and it's the one with geeky candy on the on a thumbnail and she's, it's about 20 minutes in. It's right after Odin arrives. If somebody wants to go check it out, it's fine. It's on Nerdrotic Live. Nothing to hide. Uh, so yeah, something out of nothing. But it's nice to know that people are watching your every word and going to clip something out. Um, I don't know. I, I, I Listen, that's fine. That's part of it. Where I come from, uh, or, where I come from, which is uh, initially suburbia, the suburbs. But then um, my life went south and I ended up on the streets and rolling with some pretty freaking gnarly bad people and cooking meth and all that crap. Uh, and, and yeah, so um, where I come from, people don't do stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of, I would see it kind of as snitching, but whatever. Do what you want. Be the little gossip girl. Don't care. Don't care. But uh, I will back up Candace, and I usually don't get in the YouTube drama. And you know, don't go after. I'm not going to mention the YouTuber's name. It's not worth it. It's done. I guess they apologized, and if they apologized and Candace is okay with it, then it's squashed in my book. I'm fine. I don't care. Uh, they they can call me whatever they want. I don't care. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, it, it's it's sometimes when you're just trying to have a good time or entertain people, it, we're going to flub. I'm not even going to say it was a flub, though. I, I'm not calling it that. She was just describing somebody. And again, there was nothing before or after that. There wasn't her talking about lifestyles or how people live or anything like that. It was just that description. And then the conversation was over. Uh, honestly, I didn't even remember it at first. <laughs> so... Uh, but yeah, that's, that's that, uh, Jeremy made a video on it. He took care of it. And, uh, but I was there, I was there. And as far as calling her out, um, uh, there was nothing to call her out for. If somebody does something that I feel needs to be called out on my live stream, I'll do it. Uh, but it would have to be pretty bad. Okay. Cause I generally, I don't know if you notice, I let people talk on my live streams. I let them do, do their thing. Uh, I trust people and I've never had a problem, not once, uh, with anybody on Friday night tights. Now, you know, there was a co-host back in the day that I had a couple problems with, <laughs> but that, I mean, that was a long time ago. Uh, no, it was a great live stream last night. Hope you enjoyed it. If you watched it, uh, her and the steadfast for 10 Canadian dollars, nothing to say, but he just donates or they, I'm sorry. I don't want to misgender my apologies. Take me to gender jail. Uh, 10 Canadian pesos. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. If you have a question, please, you don't have to just pop it in the chat, hit at nerdrotic. I'll keep an eye out for it. Her in, 
Uh, Nikki D for five dollars. Which villain do you believe Christian Bale will play in the upcoming Thor movie? Gore, the God Butcher, Adam Warlock, or Captain Patriarchy? Captain Patriarchy, Nikki D. Of course. Um, if Christian Bale was playing Adam effing Warlock, then I will officially be excited about that movie. I'm not going to lie. Now, if it's going to be, I'm goofy, goofy Adam Warlock. No, I would very much like to see Taika woke titty prove everybody wrong and make a butch ass superhero film. Now that doesn't mean uh, we want Natalie Portman in a metal bikini. Uh, it, does, it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, I just want to see a superhero story. I just watched an interview with Kelly Sue DeConnick that's going to be part of my video if you show it. And it, I mean, it was from two years ago. It's been in a bunch of people's videos a couple of years ago who were the comic book reviewers. But I, there's probably a lot of Star Wars Doctor Who and other people who have never even heard of this person and don't know what she said a couple of years ago about the hero's journey and about what she intended to do in comic books, which was make people uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I want to write Captain America. What do I want to do? What's the first thing I want to do? Make people uncomfortable. Uh, no, no. You do that with your own story. If you want to craft a story that makes people think, you know, like Parasite or Django Unchained or something. I mean, I'm just pulling shit out of my ass right now. You want to make people uncomfortable. You want to make them feel things, emotions about suffering and stuff like that. Hell yeah, that's great. I think it's great in an original story. Captain Goddamn America should be about fighting the bad guys. And uh, the, some of the stuff she says is just, it's, it's bullshit. She's never read uh, Captain America comics. She didn't grow up on She might say she did, okay? But uh, she either, okay, she might have enjoyed them and then she took her women's studies class and then hated them. Okay, I don't know. But uh, I don't know. I, I have read them and wh th that wasn't what she read. Okay, so... You'll always hear that comics were always political. Doctor Who was always political. Star Trek was always political. Um, no, it's been moral. Moral. And what's happening is people are conflating political with moral. So it's not a political... At least I don't see it that way. Um, I don't think being an ist is political. I think it is moral. I think everybody's against it. We might have different takes on it, and some people's takes might not be that good, but being a full-on ist, no. That word gets thrown around. Now, there's there's bigots, uh, of course, and there's political bigots. Political bigotry is the worst problem we have right now. Unfortunately, though, there's nothing you can do that. There is. I looked on the books for California, and there is no law. Somebody can fire you if they don't like your politics. You know, believe that shit? Yeah. Yeah, there's no technical law. Now, you could probably get somebody in a lot of trouble, but you'd have to prove it because uh, this is an at-will state. Not very democratic of them, is it? Uh, so, uh, Nikki D, thank you for the $5. Uh, I, th I don't know who he's going to play. I have to think about that one. But Taika Waititi is probably going to make it just silly. Um, you know, when I saw Ragnarok, I didn't hate it. I thought it was fine. But when you see it in context where Marvel is going, its direction, to me, I would equate that movie to Star Trek 2009. When you see it, it's a good cast. It's an enjoyable movie. It's dumb. But it did irrevocable damage to the Star Trek brand. I see Ragnarok like that. Because we got Ragnarok, and then we got, uh, and this doesn't get talked about enough, the Wasp and Ant-Man. And yes, it was the Wasp and Ant-Man. Go look at all the posters and everything, and they sold you, they sold me on an Ant-Man movie starring Paul Rudd. Well, it was co-starring Paul Rudd. It was starring Evangeline Lilly, who is a fine actress as a bit player. She cannot carry a film. She doesn't have the chops. Neither does Tessa Thompson. Neither does Evan Rachel Wood in Westworld. Uh, Tandy Newton, yeah, you know, I think she does. 
uh, I, I agree with Drinker. She's a little godlike right now. They tried to dial that back, but, you know, whatever. Uh, there are plenty of women who have major gravitas, major charisma. Uh, the problem is uh, it's the men and women writing them in Hollywood right now that, that are not doing them any favors at all. Uh, they're not doing anybody any favors. Uh, but I would, oh my God, if Christian Bale was playing Adam Warlock, God, I want to love the MCU. I do. I do. I love Marvel. I, you know, if you told me five years ago that Sam Raimi was going to direct a Dr. Strange movie, uh, that would be the best MCU movie ever made. It would be comic book accurate. It would be a nice, it would be a nice compact story. It would be a Doctor Strange story, and it would be scary because um, Sam Raimi is a well, he's a true talent uh, when he's when he's free to do what he wants. When he's a hired gun, I don't know. But Drag Me to Hell is a PG thirteen horror movie that's very very good. I own it. I love the movie. It's got a great ending. Great ending. That the ending made the movie straight up. Uh, but it's, it's the concept and his ability to direct, uh, and his ability to set a scene to creep you out. So you don't need shock. Uh, you don't need gore, although he brings the gore better than anybody. And if you don't believe me, watch Ash vs. Evil Dead seasons one through three. Uh, there is so much practical blood in that thing. My God. Um, but him making it now. I'm excited, but I think he's a hired gun and Scarlet Witch being in it. I'm sorry. Why is Scarlet Witch in a Doctor Strange movie? You know what? Why is it Moon Dragon in it with her? I like Moon Dragon, by the way. I mean, that is a powerful female character and she's bald. I have no problem with that. I liked Moon Dragon. Uh, my favorite team book, by the way, is The Defenders. That's right, The Defenders. I like The Avengers. I have a complete run of The Avengers. Uh, I love my team books. Uh, I love my team books. Um, I have a big run of Justice League of America uh, for years. Um, love The Outsiders. Love The Teen Titans. Love The Fantastic Four. Love The Champions. The original champions. Not that... SJW Marvel stuff. Uh, the original champions was the weirdest team. It was Hercules, Angel, Iceman, Black Widow, and Ghost Rider. <laughs> it's a great team. I loved it. Uh, I don't know how the hell, I mean, it was the 70s. So all of a sudden, they were just a team. They're all, hey, two X Men and two Avengers and a demon. Let's team up and get a base and we'll go on adventures together. Okay. <laughs> Freaking love comics in the seventies. Um, Oh, and you know what? Kelly Sudaconic, I read champions one through what is it? 19, 17, 18, 19. Uh, not a single political moment in a, in any of those books, not a single one, maybe one environmental when they took on Swarm. Remember the killer bees were going to come get us all in the 70s if you're my age? Uh, if you're not my age, there was a big scare that the killer bees were coming and they're going to come and get us. And uh, when they eventually did show up, yeah, they, you know, I think they got a person or two. They're around. You don't want to mess with the killer bees. But uh, they made it sound like you wouldn't be able to go outside your house. So if you wonder why people don't trust the media, just saying. Uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Mr. CCDV, $2. Has anybody kept an eye on the dolphins? Has anybody kept an eye on the dolphins? Are they still here? Uh, I haven't checked. I haven't been to SeaWorld in years. Is, uh, SeaWorld's probably not even okay to be around, right? Uh, SeaWorld's bad. It's captive animals. But in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy... Um, the dolphins knew that the earth was about to be destroyed and they tried to tell us, uh, but we couldn't understand their language. And their final message to us was so long and thanks for all the fish. Sooner Mitch is a member at the Jaloja level. Jaloja. 
Jaloja. And by the way, the Orville is available on Hulu. Two great seasons. $5.99 is their basic plan. And their plan without commercials is $11.99. This stream is not sponsored by Hulu, Seth MacFarlane, and the Orville. Uh, Michael Smith has has is a member at the Jaloja level. Welcome, Michael Smith. Greetings. We're going to do a short uh, Q&A tomorrow. Make sure you have hangouts in your head headphones. Uh, it'll have to be like 45 minutes because I do have to get this review done someday. I'll admit I, screw, I didn't do much today. I didn't do much work today. I think I only worked like four hours. I usually work nine or ten. But I only did four. I took a nap. Took a nap. Uh, I fell asleep. I mean, this is no reflection on the live stream, guys. I was really tired. I was up, uh, even though the uh, Friday night tights ended pretty early, I ended up staying up till two in the morning. And if y'all have ever live stream, or if you've ever just, okay, live streaming is like going to Vegas, hanging out with your friends. And you know, like that one night you just sit down in a lounge and you talk for six hours. That's live streaming. And you're a little worn out, you know. Uh, that's what it's like live streaming. So I was pretty worn out today. I was listening to uh, the author Stephen Walton's podcast with uh, the president, Abu Nas, and Sporking News podcast, and uh, oh, who else was there? Final Death Star? Was Final Death Star there? And Lethal Lightning. Uh, I know I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, uh, Tom from Midnight's Edge. I know I'm forgetting somebody else. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. I snoozed out a little bit, but it was good. It was a good live stream, but I was just tired. Uh, Eric Stuller for five dollars. Careful on that review. Don't don't want you hoisting yourself on on your own Picard. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't. Well, it better be good as much as I'm talking it up, and that's the part. Um, so I've already started it and completely shit canned two. Uh, I've got like ten or minutes in, and I hate it. So I'm just going to do it like I've always done a review. I was trying to like, I don't know, do something a little different. I'm not doing it any different. I'm going to do it just like my my Fall of Skywalker review, which is approaching a half a million views. So thank you. Thank you. It's going to I'm just going to I'm just going to describe I'm going to go through the episodes and try to just point out all the dumb stuff. Uh if you want to see my regular reviews, I did reviews of each episode live. I'm just going to point out all the dumb stuff, all the stuff that I think is dumb, all the things that I think are not Star Trek that take me out of the story. And I can tell you right now, when it comes to Star Trek Picard, uh, now it's the their superficial, fake, woke agenda that derails the show. But what truly derailed the show wasn't that. It was the horrific storytelling, the horrific characterizations, the verisimilitude, as the great Robert Meyer Burnett sa says, is just out the window. It's not believable. It's not good. It's not well acted. It's not well written. It's not well shot. The effects are garbage, garbage for something that costs that much. You know, that show was still expensive, like horrendously expensive. Uh, Star Trek is a giant money pit and guess what? CBS wants to keep making it go for it. And you know what? If they, if they course correct, uh, Mark Bernardin, uh, who was featured in one of my videos, he's on, uh, Kevin Smith's podcast. That guy seems like a good guy. He doesn't seem like, uh, he seems like a true blue nerd to me. Now, will he be a creative force on that show? I hope so. Or will he just be an Alex Kurtzman lackey? And I think that's the case. I think you got to be an Alex Kurtzman lackey. So somewhat in defense of the people of those shows, I don't know if they're allowed to let their true talent shine because they are oppressed, for lack of a better word, by Kurtzman's um, inability to make anything good when it comes to genre. Uh, he's, uh, he's a... I don't want to go that mean. He's a poser. He's a poser. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care that we care. He doesn't care. Well, I know he cares that, that we're mad. He's actually pretty thin skinned about that stuff. And CBS has done some pretty dirty tricks, uh, when it comes to us critics and maybe, you know, if we can get some evidence someday, I would love to talk about it, but I have no evidence. So I won't talk about it much. Then there's been dirty tricks played on us. 
And um, there's also uh, like people trying to lure us into false spoilers. Um, I got news for you. You're not going to get me. You're not going to get me. For one, I know somebody who works inside that building. Um, I've talked to people who've worked on the show, former employees of the show. Uh, so I know what's up now. Uh, I know what's up. I know what's coming. I know what's not coming. And I'm not going to talk about it. You know what I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about the show because the worst thing that can happen to Star Trek, to Alex Kurtzman's Star Trek is for Alex Kurtzman to make more of it. There's nothing I can do. Doomcock can do Midnight's Edge can do to damage Star Trek uh, more than Alex Kurtzman making more Star Trek. <laughs> so, I mean, all I have to do is review an episode. Uh, my LCS is closed. Please help Giorgio Soisa for uh, two Canadian dollars. You know, I put the word out that I would offer a thousand dollars to a comic shop that needs it. They have to email me. They have to send me their business license. I have, and they, they got to put comic shop help in the title. Uh, I have yet to receive an email. I'll put it in a video and it'll probably get out to more people. Um, frankly, you know, the videos get out to more people than the live streams do. The live streams generally get out to, uh, depending on the live stream. Uh, it says like what you see, the number right there, the concurrent viewer, so that's the people watching for a certain amount of time. It's not really counting the people who come in and out and in and out, um, which is generally a little bit more. Uh, but um, it's like it varies between 10,000 and 20,000 and 30,000. Um, but I, yeah, I, you know, I'll help. Sure. Uh, I figure I, I, I want to give back a little bit. I, um, Cause I'm railing on the, on the publishers pretty hard and uh, to their credit, to their credit, DC is giving the comic shops $250,000. And that's a true story. So well done, DC. Well done. But they're not really giving it to the comic shops. They're giving it to bookstores. Bookstores. So I, it's still a very generous move. I would like it to specifically go to the comic shops. But... Uh, it's going to bookstores, which is good. Fine. That's fine. They did something. Now it's time for Marvel to step up to the plate, uh, make everything returnable. Actually, the whole industry needs to pause. If you want to do something positive, you hit the pause button. You do not produce any work. Uh, you reevaluate what you are going to produce because when you give the shops snowflake and safe space, then you just guaranteed that they will close in December instead of January. Um, you need to make better content. You need to change your ways, Marvel and DC. You need to you need to straight up go to mainstream comic books. Hero's Journey, Spider-Man fighting Doc Ock, the Captain America being Steve Rogers and fighting the Red Skull, Sam Wilson being the Falcon. He doesn't have to be his little assistant. I love it when it's Captain America and the Falcon. Those were brilliant books. And you know what? The character of Sam Wilson, who was known by nobody back in the day, although I knew him when I was a kid because I had my Falcon Mego action figure, which I still have to this day. Um, and now everybody knows him. Anthony Mackie played him great. I just wish they put him in a proper costume. He doesn't look like a superhero. He looks like G.I. Joe, but... He, he, he did him, he played him great. He gave him a brilliant personality and uh, I hope they don't muck it up. Uh, but apparently they are, they're going to do it. So God damn, I hope I'm wrong about that. But um, yeah, yeah, I love comic books. <laughs> I just do, uh, but I'm getting old. So uh, there's still old stuff I haven't read. There's a bunch of DC Silver Age that I haven't read. So that's that's been kind of my journey. I've always been a Marvel guy. Uh, and it was just because the comics were cheaper in the 70s. Uh, DC comic books uh, were 40 cents. 40 cents. And Marvel was 25. So I can get two comics from Marvel for 50 cents. Uh, and when I was, you know, I was my paper route. Uh, my paper route, I was getting $12 a week. 
$12 a week, and that went towards soda, Pringles, and comic books. That's pretty much it. Uh, I had no store near me in my house, so I got on my little BMX bike, and I, I rode down to a place called the Marketplace, and we got a can of Pringles, and we tried to peek at the Playboys, you know, without the guy catching us. We're like looking, we're like, oh, we're just getting Pringles, and we're looking over at the pay playboys in the penthouse and then we'd get our comic book and our and our soda which our my mom told me not to get uh and yeah and we go shoot things with bb guns not animals or anything like cans and stuff uh warren smith uh is a member at the jaloja le level welcome welcome yeah I, sh I shot my friend with a BB gun once. I feel bad about that. That was a dick move. That was a dick move. I thought it was funny at the time. The judgment of a nine-year-old is not very good. Uh, I shot him in the behind. It was not cool. Uh, Bear Business One for $5. How can this be the supervillain stream and not have pics of Captain Marvel and the bestest ever, Jody? Um... I, you know what? I wanted to present to everybody that this was a true chill stream. So I'm going to put two characters that I love, uh, that I think represent everything that's good in storytelling. Of course, they're white males, so nobody's going to listen to them anymore. But it's Gandalf and the Tenth Doctor. Uh, I was going to throw together like a list of like my favorite New Who episodes, but I didn't have time. I just, I was, like I said, I, I, I needed to take a little time off. Uh, my brain has been moving and moving i've been live streaming every day and uh and you know also uh i spend a fair amount of time trying to figure this platform out because this platform is like a woman uh you know what robin williams said about women the only man who ever figured out a woman died laughing true story so uh just kidding ladies i love you but uh you're complex okay you're complex and so is this platform. And this platform is going through some, it's nuts. So the channel's doing fine. Uh, it's still growing. I can't, I don't understand it, uh, but it's, I'm grateful. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, evaluating what I'm going to do uh, because um, I'm probably just going to do some reviews reviews uh my reviews do pretty well anyway they're just tons of work but uh when i get past the star trek picard review i'm gonna finish that witcher review probably finish the star trek discovery 2 review i'm just gonna do reviews till this shit is open um and live stream until we're open until we're back in business i hope comic-con sticks with it i know people are criticizing them but uh I hope we're able to congregate by July or we're going to have much bigger problems than Com Comic-Con. I have a feeling we're going to be able to. It's just a feeling. Uh, Rich Suddy for five pounds. Gary Picard, Gary's Picard review is the Michelangelo painting of the Sistine Chapel, a work of art that needs time. God, it better be. <laughs> I will do my very best. I am no mauler or critical drinker. Uh, those are, those two guys are extremely intelligent, educated men. Okay. I am not an educated man. I have a hard time with spelling. My grammar sucks. I, I, it's not a lie. When I said I was kicked out of three high schools, I punched my principal. That was my last one. That was my last straw. So, uh, so why did I punch my principal? Why did I punch my principal? Well, he said something I didn't like. Uh, and I, th I frustrated him. Uh, now I'm looking back on it as an adult. Okay. So uh, I, you would think that how effed up is it uh, that you punched your principal and what did he do to get punched? Uh, was I just being a, a, you know, a loaded teenager? Sure. I was loaded. I was definitely loaded. Uh, and I was being a pain in the ass. I wasn't showing up to school. I think he genuinely was worried about me and wanted me to learn, but he lost his cool. And when he lost his cool, he said something pretty fucked up. So, 
you know, uh, I was, I was not feeling good in my life anyway. And that's why I wasn't going to school because nothing was working out for me because I was a kid. I was confused. I was getting high all the time. I didn't know what was up. I'd been kicked out of my house. I had no place to go. Uh, and then I had this principal tell me, you know, you're just going to, you're not going to amount to anything. You're just, you're a waste of space. <laughs> it's something to that effect. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase, paraphrase, but he said, you basically the, you'll never amount to anything. Some people are just born losers and you're it. Sorry, kid. So I popped him. <laughs> I'm all, well, if I'm a loser, okay. F you old man. Um, there's other stuff that we did to that guy. He got his car stolen. <laughs> it's just a poor guy got messed with a lot. Uh, problem being for a pound 99 Blake seven will cleanse your palate. A Avon lives. I can't wait to watch that. I can't wait to watch that. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Maybe I'll do reviews on it on Nerdrotic live. As a matter of fact, I will, I will. A backhanded compliment. I know 30 year olds who weren't ever drug addicts who looked older than you, <laughs> whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Stay healthy. Uh, Corey Timigan for five Australian dollars. Why? Thank you. Well, it, it might've been the drugs. Maybe they had a reverse effect. No, I I'm old. I'm old. It's the camera or something. I don't know. Um, that's why I grew a beard. I'll be, I'm not trying to, to brag or anything. I don't mind looking old. I've got a big gray streak. I think it's right here, right here. Like I'm getting old. Okay. But, um, when I was 30, I looked 18. So, that's when I started growing the beard. Cause I got tired of people younger than me calling me kiddo, you know? I, yeah. And that, that happened when I was in my forties, I had people, you know, younger than me calling me kiddo. It's like, dude, I'm older than you. Come on, stop it. Um, the doctor 14 Blu-ray reviews for 10 pounds. I can always count on an interesting super chat from the doctor. The BBC to deliver biggest push on education in history. 14 weeks of educational programs and lessons to every household in the country. Whatever your child's age, beginning on the 20th of April. Um, I wouldn't want my kid learning from the BBC. I will homeschool. Now, if the BBC, if the BBC would, would politicize math, okay? So I wouldn't have my kid learning from the state sponsored BBC. I don't want, as a matter of fact, uh, I am not a religious person. I respect, you know, I'm, I'm, I do not disrespect people who are Catholic or Lutheran or, uh, or, uh, Islamic or, uh, Jewish. I, I, whatever works for you. Awesome. No problem here. Uh, but that being said, my kid's going to a Catholic school now because I don't want my kid learning, uh, from the San Francisco curriculum because it's insane. It's insane. It's California, but worse. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is gone from Netflix. Oh, oh, it's gone from Netflix. You don't have to apologize. That is terrible. Where'd it go? Oh, it's probably went to prime, right? Did it go to prime? That sucks. You know, Doctor Who, the reason it's popular here in the States, folks, Netflix, 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 not BBC America. No, 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 no. Netflix. Let's see where Lord of the Rings is going. Dude, I bet you uh, Netflix is bummed that they got rid of it. Uh, yeah, you got to pay to watch it on Amazon. Unless. I don't know. Hang on. Let me see if I, if I log into my account. Nope. Yeah. You got to pay for it. That sucks. Well, it's worth the three ninety nine. Hell it's worth the nine ninety nine. I highly, highly recommend if you have not bought it, uh, let's see how much it is. I mean, I know everybody's not made of money right now, but if you want hours of entertainment that you will watch over and over and over again, 
uh, then you yeah okay so Lord uh, Amazon shipping uh, they're prioritizing their shipping which I mean that makes sense but the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray Special Edition, the one that's in the gold box, uh, the Motion Picture Trilogy, it has the extended versions. Uh, it goes for $69.95. You could probably get it for $40 on eBay, get a used copy for $30, $40. Buy it. Buy it. Without question, buy it. It's It's brilliant. Oh my God. There's the fake Lord of the Rings movie, the rise of the fellowship. Remember those offshoot. <laughs> oh God. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, okay. I thought it was one of those offshoot movies, but it's uh, a group of friends embark on an epic journey to find a new world. I uh, have only heard of encountering dangerous obstacles and threats around every corner. 2015, the rise of the fellowship. Um, I don't know if you guys, I know they, they probably still do it, but when I worked at the warehouse back in the nineties, if there was a hit movie, there was like some B movie offshoot that it was basically made. So people will accidentally pick it up. It was also made to launder money in Hollywood. Believe it or not, folks, they make B movies to launder drug money. Yes, indeed. I'm sure most of you knew that. I'm sure everybody in Hollywood will deny it and they can go ahead and do that. Uh, you know what? There it is. This is from the episode I just watched. Hang on. Let's see if I can, uh, if I can get this for you. Nope, that's not it. That's it. That's kind of centered. There we go. The Fury of the Time Lord. He never raised his voice. That was the worst thing. The Fury of the Time Lord. And then we discovered why. Why this doctor, who had fought with gods and demons, why he never, why he had to run away from us and hidden. He was being kind. He wrapped my father in unbreakable chains forged in the heart of a dwarf star. He tricked my mother into the event horizon of a collapsing galaxy to be imprisoned here there forever. He still visits my sister once a year, every year. I wonder if one day he might forgive her. But there she is. Can you see it? He trapped her inside of a mirror every mirror. If you ever look at your reflection and see something move behind you just for a second, that's her. That's always her. As for me, I was suspended in time and the doctor put me to work standing over the fields of England as their protector. We wanted to live forever. So the doctor made sure we did. Fuck that, that, that. Could you imagine Jody being that? Um, those are those glimpses. That's why it being called Doctor Who means everything. That's why not knowing about the doctor's past, not knowing the doctor's name, never knowing where the doctor truly came from, never knowing the answers to the origin, never knowing the answers to what exactly the doctor is and how powerful Time Lords are. Because you can have that little paragraph right there and it says everything and nothing. It lets you know that he is kind of toying with people. He's trying to play down. Essentially, he is God roaming the universe and helping everyone with limitations. Limiting himself. Himself. Because the doctor has been a male character for over five decades and it's well established uh, it is in the, it is in, it is absolute canon. It is absolute canon. And when you change that, 
it's fanfic. It's cosplay. Oh, and I know people out there going, tough, deal with it. It's canon. No. You know what they did to the show, the new stuff? No, that, that, that's destruction. It's deconstruction. It's subversive. It's intentionally antagonizing. They made the doctor a female out of anger. Nothing more. Anger. They wanted to get back at something. They wanted to strike back at something. So they thought they would take it away from you, from us. And they have done that now. And now, finally, the Doctor Who fans did the right thing and walked away. They stopped supporting something that was adversive. That treats the fans with disrespect. That treats the former actors who played the Doctor with disrespect disrespecting everybody who purchased a book, a comic, a toy, a soundtrack, a big Finnish audio adventure. They gave us all the middle finger and we were upset. We spoke our mind and now it's time to walk away and stop supporting this stuff. And unfortunately there's some collateral damage, but you got to ask yourself if you're really a Doctor Who fan, do you support this? And if you support this and you want to make money off of future Doctor Who and you're just an enabler and you're not a critical thinker, which would lead me to believe that you're not really that much of a fan. You might like the paycheck from Dr. Who. You might like telling people you work for Dr. Who. It's very good on your resume, but you don't really care about Dr. Who because if you did, you knew you would know, you would know the damage it does to its legacy for the future, for the future fans. This show is now a joke. It's a joke. So it'll be rebooted someday. It'll be rebooted. And guess what? This is not a show you can reboot. The canon, the fact that it's been around for 50 years means everything to this show. And the fact that you broke that, you broke the show, you broke the spell. And yes, you have us, you had our, us under a spell and we loved it but you pulled back the curtain you broke the fourth wall you took a piece of it and you dropped it on all of our heads and then you laughed yeah so this paragraph try to relate that to the 13th doctor that would be a joke so well done well done BBC you accomplished uh, you, you did create conversations you absolutely created conversations and you did attract a new audience at first and that new audience rejected you so now you need a new new audience you think that's actually going to work how many times have you seen a tv show go multiple seasons and then rejuvenate how many times? I mean, some of the best have tried. Chris Carter with the X-Files. How'd that go towards the end? Just think of every TV show, every single TV show. How many of them swung back up at the end? I'm sure it happened a couple times, but we're talking one in a thousand, one in a couple thousand. Astronomical odds. Once the spell's broken, it's broken. Uh, and I see that I see microcosms of that, or I, I used to see microcosms of that at the comic sto store. When the spell is broken on a comic book series, they could resurrect Jack Kirby and put him on the book with Stan Lee, and it still wouldn't bring people back. When people were done, they were done. Uh, did you read Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. No, I have not. Scott Rainford for two pounds. Uh, let me put it, let me get, hang on, let me get my book, my suggestion book. I, I didn't have it out. I'm sorry. Here. I usually have my suggestion book. So it is called 
Wizards first rule. Thank you. I'll check it out. Thank you for the two pounds, my friend. Hope all is well. Grandpappy Fisk for $2. Watched Tiger King. That's the show. That's right. Joe Exotic was clearly set up. That seems to be the sentiment, but I don't know because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But I want everybody to keep in mind because like it's good to look at as the glass is half full. It might seem like the world is ending around you. And I do not mean to minimize anybody who is currently sick. It's not my intention. I am very sorry if that's happening. I hope you are well. Um, but there's a big wide world out there. And uh, for those of us who might be watching the news, I don't watch the news at all. I don't watch a second of it because it's all lies. It's all lies in my opinion. That's just my opinion. It might seem like the world is ending, but then the entire world watched Tiger King <laughs> and it exists. And the fact that we were, there's memes and stuff means the world is going on as it should. So again, we'll get through this. We will. Uh, it might be a different world. It might not. Tell you what, I'll give you spoilers if I release this video or not. Tell you what, tell you, tell you who won't change. Comic book creators. Comic book creators will not change. They will come back as driven as ever, doubling down, tripling down, alienating customers like it was 2017. I promise you that. I would love to think differently. And we've seen a lot of love out there in the comic book industry, but nothing's going to change. Forget in and out. I ran a little, I ran a little Caesars for years. Uh, we'd sell $605 pizzas in five hours. It was miserable. Uh, yeah, uh, did you run it though? I mean, Hey, you ran it. Were you the owner? Uh, yeah, I bet you that. Yeah. And it's just cooking pizzas, railing it. And honestly, that's the only chain thing I have. I have that and a, and a Popeye's in my neighborhood. Uh, my neighborhood is, uh, uh, semi hood it's hood on the other side of uh, the main thoroughfare and then it's improving neighborhood uh but no it's it, yeah i don't live with the i don't live with the rich folks i don't live with the rich folk kind of blue cut well it's really blue collar where i am uh but there's a little caesars that's right there is uh yeah i i can imagine that would not be fun but the money is probably pretty good if you own it or if you run it, uh, Juan Suros for two dollars. Thank you, Mark C. Uh, release the Zikri cut better than STP review. I don't know if it'll be better. My Star Trek Picard review, Juan. Uh, Mark Zikri's great. I, I'm uh, I'm not that great of an interviewer. Here's what's kept me from doing that. I came really close to doing it on Thursday, and it's like, I'll be honest with you, it's crowdfunding. Uh, I want to give him the pub and I'm really sorry. I didn't release it earlier. It's just, it required editing. I lost, you know, my, I don't have a ton of time. I'm a one man show and my priorities are the videos and the live streams and Patreon and everything else. Um, I, I, I took it on a whim. I, and I, he is one of the few people I would interview and it will see the light of day, but it's crowdfunding and just, is just not the best. I feel bad for him because he just started crowdfunding right when this thing went down. And Mark Zickery is trying to do what we all want somebody to do. He is trying to create his own science fiction series that is straight up just a TV show. No freaking agenda. And it's got Star Trek actors in it like Robert Picardo, uh, Nichelle Nichols, and if he could get enough money and the fact that he's doing this all on his own is impressive as hell. Now, is it as polished as a network television show? No, but it's pretty freaking close. This guy knows what he's doing. I don't know how he's not working. He could run Star Trek right now and, it, and there would just be happy Star Trek fans. I don't know why CBS doesn't pluck this guy up. 
I don't know why. He'd be cheaper than Alex Kurtzman. He knows Star Trek up and down, left and right. He has written it in the past. Uh, Layla World Ease for five. I don't know what an SGD is. What's an SGD? We'll just say $5 between friends. Hail Gary. I have sent you an email 10 days ago regarding the exozone ideas. Wondering if you have seen it. I I'll link a video of Bree. I link a video of a video of Bree singing in it. Oh, I'll check it out. I must've missed it, but let me mark it right now. Hang on. Oh, don't tell me I have an account problem right now. No problems right now. Uh, uh, 10 day. Okay. I got it. It is marked. It is marked. I will leave. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Back to you guys. Back to you guys. Thank you very much for the email. Thank you for the super chat. I will check it out. Um, the exozone. Oh, this is the bummer thing about the exozone. The YouTube is shadowing the hell out of it. And when we do an exozone, it get like nobody gets notifications. I mean, we'd straight up have to clickbait you and say it's a Star Trek live stream and then start talking about the exozone, which I don't want to do. So maybe Doomcock and I will record something, but I'd love to discuss with you guys because I uh, I want to do an open episode about what's going on and my theories and stuff because I have theories. I just don't want to talk about them here. We keep it light here. Bob Costas. Is this the Bob Costas for $9.99? Uh, and thank you again. Thank you again. Lala. I'm just going to say Lala. Bob Costas for four for nine 99. Hey mate. Great stream the other night uh, with the boys been following diamond and many shop closures. Does the industry want a physical focus publisher? I could create it, but it would, it would like to see appetite. Uh, I would like to create it, but would like to see appetite don't know what you meant by that sorry bob um a physical focus publisher you mean like uh i don't i don't entirely understand you mean making physical books um not quite sure what you're talking about there uh as far as we've got plenty of publishers what the industry needs, Bob, is another distributor. The industry, the industry needs a real distributor. As far as uh, what's going on right now, there's, I mean, as far as getting product out to stores, it's a moot point. You, you can't do it because uh, they're closed. So, but uh, what, what the comic book industry needs is better stories with more, and then more customers will come in and buy more comic books, and then there'll be more money, which would create a new distributor. Uh, and Bob, it's great that you, that you uh, want to help, but uh, the comic book industry would need somebody with a billionaire backer to come in if they wanted to be serious, like they, a billionaire backer, because it is a billion dollar industry. So you can't come in with... Uh, a million bucks, a couple of million bucks. Uh, no, nah, yeah, we need a billionaire backer to come in and and literally prop the industry up for a couple of years as it shifts and does something it doesn't want to do. The thing is, it doesn't want to do it. There's there there isn't the mindset in the industry to want to change. They think everything is fine. They like what's going on and those people within the industry because it's been the same MFers for the last. 25, 30 years running everything because there's no change because it's a big club and they've been gatekeeping and anybody who comes in and tries to change anything gets squashed or laughed at or blackballed. So I like the industry. I don't like a lot of the people in it. Now, there's a lot of innocent people in this, but they kept their mouth shut or they've been going along with the flow. And you know what? You get what you get. You get what you get at that point. You lose my sympathy. Now, I know there are a lot of good store owners who have tried to change things and they have been squashed. They have been squashed. And then there's some nasty people out there, like uh, that guy who threatened Ethan. I, I mean, 
I'd say nasty, not a well person, like a person who sincerely, and I mean this, uh, needs help. Like, get some help, dude. The fact that you said that out loud, um, I, I don't think for a minute you could, would do any of that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I can't say that. I can't say that uh, because that is a is a really, really deranged, uh, uh, that is some deranged behavior that needs, I mean, years of therapy to help that because you, you look like you're an older guy. Uh, yeah. So somebody threatened Ethan Van Skyver's life uh, and, and doubled down on it. And I'm sure they're upset because this person opened up a new comic shop 10 months ago, but this person has owned comic shops before. Okay. This isn't his first rodeo. That's uh, uh Wellman. His last name is Wellman. He used to own comic bug down in LA. And uh, he opened up another shop called Atomic Basement Comics 10 months ago, 10 weeks ago, 10 weeks ago. And then this thing happened. And then out of the blue, uh, after Ethan shared a Larry Hama thing on Facebook, and I'm going off of memory, off of reading a Bounding in a Comics article, uh, th this guy Wellman popped in and said he'll do something very nasty to Ethan. Ethan did the right thing and blasted it, did what I would have done. Um, and uh, I haven't heard much since, so hope that guy gets some help. Not all shop owners are like that, but comic book people, let's be weird. Let's be, uh, let's be frank. Uh, it's not the most stable industry in the world. It's a very self-loathing industry, always has been, always will be. Uh, and it's filled with artists. It's filled with very passionate, neurotic people. Um. Caesar Sosa for $1.99. Gary, when will we get a Snowflame movie? My God, the world needs a Snowflame movie, Caesar. The world needs a Snowflame. Cocaine is his God, and he is the instrument of his will. I, You know what, Caesar? In all seriousness, they should make a Snowflame movie. They should. If HBO Max does like a two hour movie and you get um, like Jackson public to write it or <laughs> something like that, that would be brilliant. That would be effing brilliant. Uh, Geeks, Graves and good stuff for $5. Thanks for the $1.99 Caesar. I, I freaking love it. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I lost my train of thought there. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, get the guys the, the, uh, from Venture Brothers to write a Snowflame movie. Live action. Who would you get to play Snowflame? Who would who would play a good uh, Antonio Banderas as Snowflame? <laughs> ah, that'd be funny. I am Snowflame. Cocaine is my god. And I am the instrument of his will. <laughs> Uh, I'm catching up on Titan season one. I see the Akiva Goldsman touch. The random cursing is ridiculous and adds nothing. You were right about him. Thank you. Yes. Titan season one is hot garbage. Um, the kid playing Robin is good. The costume looks good in the beginning. Everything else is terrible, but the fourth episode with the doom patrol is good. And Akiva has nothing to do with it. Jeff Johns wrote that episode. Uh, I didn't even, I watched the first episode of season two and I was out. And you know how bad something has to be for me not to watch a superhero thing? And guess who produces it? Geeks, Graves, and Good Stuff? Greg effing Berlanti. Love the late night chill streams. Hail, what's up, Stellar Heather? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm glad you guys like them. Hey, I got a lot of positive response. Um, you know, I don't throw a title. I didn't put anything in the metadata on this. And the fact that you're here, thanks again, if you're coming here. Yeah, you know, I might rant a little bit, but uh, we're just talking there. We're just talking. Uh, if I don't do the square up tonight, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, Picard ain't coming out tomorrow. <laughs> it's not. Maybe Monday. Maybe Monday. Uh, so the one I worked on and I still have it, so I could probably use pieces of it is 40 minutes long and I'm halfway through the first season. I'm halfway through season one, 
40 minutes. So, and again, I'm no Mahler. Like Mahler, uh, how do I put this? Mahler's smart and I'm not. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if Mahler has been educated in it or he just knows it because he's smart. I cannot break down story structure because I'm not a liter. Uh, I can't even say it. I'm not a literary major at all. Uh, I haven't studied storytelling, but I've sold a ton of books. I've sold a ton of stories. So I learned through osmosis. Uh, but sometimes I don't know the right terminology and all that stuff. You know. At least The Expanse finished filming season five before the thing happened. Did it, Sam L.? Oh, that's, oh, that's brilliant. Maybe that's why they had, uh, that, well, cause they, that's right. Cause season five was greenlit so early. Ah, that's good. That's good. And we also, unfortunately, Star Trek Discovery finished as well. I don't think we'll get it this year though. I don't think we're going to get the expanse this year. I don't think we're going to get Star Trek Discovery this year. You can cross your fingers on the Orville. Uh, it might be a possibility. I don't know. Uh, they seem to be on track. When I was there, everything was going good. Uh, that is just a happy workplace. There, And you could tell. So imagine Star Trek Discovery's workplace where they ratted out Walter Mosley. And after visiting the set of the Orville, I, where everybody was smiling and there wasn't any tense bullshit because you don't have to watch what you say because it's a Seth MacFarlane production and they have the ship designer from Battlestar Galactica there and Tom Constantino is there and they have this amazing production designer who's like his art is so off the fucking hook good like I can't even put words to how good this guy is um uh he's he's a brilliant brilliant artist and I wish I could describe what I saw, but you know, people look at the Orville as like, uh, and this is wrong by the way, if you do, I'm not saying you guys do in the chat. I'm saying the people who are critical of it, they look at it as a dumb Star Trek parody. It is so far be past that. Now it is, it is now its own show. I always compare it to the venture brothers, which started out as a Saturday morning cartoon, Johnny quest parody, which turned into uh, one of the greatest animated shows ever on television. One of the best written shows on television. Some of the tightest canon on television. And a show that, if you watch it, is universally loved. Uh, the Orville's the same thing. So some of the sets, some of the production design, which I cannot describe to you and I wouldn't want to ruin it for you, is cinematic good. Like, f whoa, amazingly good. Um, the special effects are already better in Star Trek Discovery. Uh, don't get fooled by their 90s aesthetic at all. They're going to stick with that. I walked the set. Uh, I walked the Orville. I walked the aisles of the Orville. It's a, it takes up an entire soundstage. It's two levels. Uh, they have a whole other thing. They have the shuttle in uh, the shuttle bay in a complete different studio. They're taking up so much room. They have to put stuff outside and put tarps over it because it's taken up so much room, tons of practical effects. The makeup is amazing. Uh, and I got to see a scene being filmed, which was, uh, which was fucking cool. <laughs> fucking cool. And the best part about it is I didn't have to shill at all because I genuinely like the Orville. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I genuinely like that show and they, you know, they're cool. Like they're cool. So, um, <clears throat> Hopefully they're on track, but it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. It's, fuck. I was really impressed though, but you know, maybe I'm easy to impress. It's not like I get to visit, you know, sets all the time. Like, cause I've never done that. So, uh, I've been to Lucasfilm. Uh, I've been to ILM, uh, I've been to Skywalker ranch. Uh, I was at Skywalker ranch when they were, uh, doing revenge of the Sith. I mean, you know, I saw George and Rick McCallum. 
uh, got there, a friend of a friend, but we just toured. I mean, I didn't get to see anything filmed. Uh, I didn't see, uh, I got to visit where they recorded, where John Williams recorded the soundtrack. We got a tour of the place, but I didn't see any, you know, I saw George and Rick McCallum for like a nanosecond and he kind of gave me a dirty look and, uh, he was probably busy and we kept on rolling. Now I was on a, uh, I was on a blacklist. Now this was in 2000, what, two. So I, I had no internet presence at all. I'm guessing I was on the blacklist because I had been in trouble with the state of California and they probably have very good security. So I had, uh, uh, our friend, the friend of a friend who got me in, had to talk them into letting me on. I was ready to go. I didn't want to ruin the trip for anybody. I'm like, it's cool. You know, if they don't want me here, I, I suspected why I was like, eh, they probably know. I don't blame them. You know, I, I listen, I've been shot down on things before because of my past. So it's, it's not anything, uh, it, it's not anything worth getting upset about because, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. The channel gives me hope that many comic and comic media fans like myself just want to see great content with no agenda. Thank you. Say, uh, Sandsfield 55 for 499. I love the logo, the OG yellow freaking bat logo. They need to return to that. I don't like uh, that's what I like. Um I hope so. The problem is the comic industry right now is filled with Kelly Sudaconics and Dan Slots. Now, the difference between Kelly Sudaconic and Dan Slot is Dan Slot is a comic book fan. It, he is a comic book fan, but he's more of a former comic book fan where it's now his, it's his job. His passion is gone. It's just a laboring job for him now. I've never thought he had any talent, to be honest with you. Uh, but he can crank out passable stories for them. And he's done irrec uh, horrible damage to the characters of, of Spider-Man. Um... And it's because he's not a, a very experienced man. He's been a shut-in most of his life. He doesn't have a lot of world experience. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't mean to get on the guy or anything, but he just doesn't have a worldly way about him. And yeah, his books show it. His books show it. <clears throat> 200 Watt Studio for $2. Netflix is filming a new episode of Tiger King now. Really? <clears throat> How are they filming it? I thought it was found footage. I thought it was like from another... I mean, I, I okay. Good. Good. I think if Netflix is sitting on anything, they should release it because they should listen to me. <laughs> uh, no, I, I hey, um, you got a captive audience. I bet you Tiger King was one of the most watched things, uh, period. Hang on a second. Sip a, sip a coffee for the uh, working ladies out there. Uh, and one for the inmates. One for the inmates. Uh, do your time, get out, change your life. I hope you do. Uh, Smooth Jam California for five pounds. Hey, Gary, I was thinking perhaps George likes to live by Douglas Adams words. I love deadlines. I like the whooshing sound they make as they fly by. Yes. Uh, yes, it was, it was problematic, uh, having those two as my favorite authors for different times. Uh, but at least, you know, it's too bad. We were going to get another Dirk Gently book out of Douglas Adams because that's what Salmon of Doubt was going to be definitively. It was going to be a Dirk Gently book. But he said it could have been one one or the other. Uh, which Hawkman, Egyptian or Space Cop? E Egyptian, Shane. Uh, War Steck. Cra uh, thank you for the... I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, Shane... Roar stick for $2. Uh, crazy cat guy, $5. I'm enjoying your chill streams. Hope there will be more. Good to hear that you and the neurotic family are healthy and hanging in there with a smile. Thank you. Crazy cat guy. I hope you are healthy and hanging in there too. We will get through this. Poor Mrs. Nerdrotic's uh, a little cooped up. Uh, again, I work from home. I'm used to it. Sucks not going to the gym, but you know, there's people who can't 
go to their job right now, so I'm not going to complain. Um, and hopefully you're just furloughed and, you know, I, I honestly here, this is just, it, maybe this is just me being dumb, but I think if everybody pauses, that would lessen the damage. Like if landlords just kick the can down the road for the rent and the, the people they have to pay bills to kick the can the, down the road the same amount of time and it just rises up. If everybody's on pause and we just like, hey, you know what? We're going to forgive everything over the last three months, no interest or anything. And we'll start it, like we hit a pause button. I don't know if that's possible, uh, seeing that things are rolling and stuff, but I don't know. All I know is, listen, um, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a commie. Okay. Uh, I'm not a socialist. Uh, I believe in land ownership. Uh, I, I, I own part of my house. The bank owns the other part and I'm paying the bank because the bank and I struck a deal that I agreed to, uh, because I read all my paperwork and I thought it was fine. The interest was ridiculous, but considering when I bought the house, I was 30 something. I was 30 something. And it was my second, well, it was my first house that I bought. It was, I bought a condo with my own money because uh, I worked my ass off from nothing, from literally nothing. And I worked my ass off and I, and I bought something. Um, yeah, I believe in that shit. I do. But, and I'll say, but if you're a landlord and you evict people during these times, you're a fucking dick. You're a fucking dick. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want the government mandating that landlords can't evict people because that is an overstretch of the government. But you know what makes the governments do that? Dick landlords who would kick people out during these times. Don't fucking do it. I know times are tough, but if you get rid of them, who are you going to rent to? Who are you going to fucking rent to? So just give it time. Okay. Okay. Friend of a friend of ours got an eviction notice. Just saying. Piss me off. Because that does make landowners look like assholes. And it gives crazy people at the New York Times excuses to write articles. Uh, and it's hard. To, I mean, have a heart. Have a heart. Business is business, but have a heart. Okay? There's, there, there's a happy medium there. For fuck's sake. Have a soul. Jesus, Gary, um, especially, listen, this person didn't need the money. Okay. And it's not for me to judge what people do with their money and who needs it and who doesn't. Okay. Cause it's not, but it doesn't have to be black or white on this issue. Uh, they could have worked something out, something instead it's just eviction notice. And it's usually due to uh, lack of sh social skills, quite honestly. Uh, anything can be worked out. Gary, have you ever done a video explaining your tattoos? Daniel, the one for $5. No, I don't know if any, I mean, thank you. I, I don't, my tattoos are not, there's, I'm not one of those people who goes, well, I got this tattoo because it reminds me of that time I was in Costa Rica, uh, Costa Rica. And, uh, I did, uh, ayahuasca and I met, um, aliens from, uh, the planet, uh, Uranus. No. Um, I, uh, when, when I got my first tattoo, it was a rebellious thing. Uh, I was 18. Nobody had tattoos in the late, well, the late eighties. Uh, there was starting to happen like guns and roses had tattoos, but not a lot of, if you weren't a, like a metal head or a punk rocker, you didn't have a tattoo. So when you turn 18, I could uh, join the Marines or get a tattoo. I chose to get a tattoo. And I went to a strip bar. Oh, yeah, I went to a strip bar. Um, and I got a tattoo. And I like tattoos. Uh, but they're not like there's no deep meaning behind any of them. It's just art. Uh, and I, I don't like blank spaces. Can you, can you tell? I hate blank spaces and my entire body was a blank space and I'm not done getting tattoos, but, uh, I love pop culture. So, uh, yeah. So I got Dr. Who, Dr. Who, uh, this one is going to be the guild of calamitous intent. When I eventually get around to it, uh, 
That's my nickname. That's my wife's name. That's from Boondock Saints. I got a Spider-Man on my back. I've got a Wolverine on my calf. I've got a Ghost Raider on the other calf. I've got uh, BPRD right there. Um, I've got a wizard right here. My first tattoo was up here, and it's a purple rabbit. And he's called the Purple Hair because I, I like the sticky icky when I was a kid. So uh, I got an animated bunny that I designed with a top hat, smoking a long cigarette, and that's my purple hair. Uh, then I had uh, a tattoo of Pretty Tied Up. You know, remember the Ghost Riders? Or Ghost Rider. Guns N' Roses song, Pretty Tied Up. So if you remember that album, there is a horrific drawing uh, by Robert L. Williams, I believe, of a woman kind of crucified on some bones, and she's all wrapped up and... I got that tattooed on my arm. Not really thinking about how the ladies would like that tattoo. And apparently they didn't. <laughs> but I got that tattoo at a place. At a place where you get tattoos that's not a tattoo shop, if you know what I'm saying. So I covered it up with a sugar skull. So I got a giant sugar skull right here. Is, th is that cultural appropriation? Is it okay for me to have a sugar skull tattoo on my arm? I hope so, because I got one. And I don't give a fuck. But um, I think that's it. Melissa, my wife, has more tattoos than I do. But I'm sorry to bore you with my tattoo stories. Uh, yeah, so... But I haven't gotten one in a while. I'm 50. I don't know. It's just like... Eh, they, at least they're not falling off me. I mean, that's, that's one thing. That's good. Uh, but the one good thing about all this is my kids don't want any tattoos, uh, which is great. Hey Gary, uh, have you watched the rev, uh, and reviewed alter carbon from Netflix? Greg for $5. I will not watch alter carbon, uh, because I heard it's woke as hell. And I like the first season. Joel Kinnaman is great. And the reason I liked it and the reason everybody else liked it was because of Joel Kinnaman. It wasn't, that's where some of the producers get, there is still star-driven stuff, although it's very rare. There is still star-driven stuff. And what Hollywood would love is to have a property that's interchangeable. Marvel's about to find this out, by the way. Marvel was very star-driven. Chris Hemsworth, uh, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, you don't have Robert Downey Jr. You don't have Chris Evans. It's not the same MCU. It's not the same MCU. Scar Joe's a good supporting character. Uh, uh, Benj, uh, 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 Cabbage Patch is, uh, he's not a very good Doctor Strange. Sorry. I, I love him as Sherlock, but I call him Cabbage Patch. Uh, but he's not, he's an, he's an okay Doctor Strange. If Sam Raimi, it might be good, but he's no Robert Downey Jr. They don't have the star power. Some stuff is star driven. Joel Kinnaman drove Alter Carbon. He was great in it. Uh, and Anthony Mackie's cool, but it's just, you know, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if he's got it for me. So, new. No. The answer is no. Uh, playing Blackjack, but thank you for the super chat. Um, Star Wars Guy, 1997 for $2. Playing Blackjack in RDR 2 right now. Stay healthy. Right on. Right on. Uh, I love me some video Blackjack in Las Vegas. I do. I will sit at a bar and drink a soda or a coffee and play video poker, video blackjack, mostly video blackjack for hours. Uh, Gary, you hear that EFAP got ghosted hardcore? I saw them get ghosted hardcore, nettle nerds. I couldn't believe it. YouTube, YouTube. It's one thing to ghost me. I get it. I'm not that important in the general scheme of things i even understand that you ghosted the exozone it's salt it's it's a little it's let's fringy stuff although i don't think it's that bad i think it's actually pretty fucking tame Mahler's one of your stars youtube don't do that don't do that because you know what Mahler could probably go and start his own website and do his own live streams and keep all of his super chat money and be just fine uh, Mahler is the one who made that video on, uh, the last Jedi and the fall of Skywalker that you recommend to everyone outside of 
red letter media that that gets millions of views because people like it. Yeah, that Mahler. Don't ghost him. Because I know Susan was Wojcicki. I know you're watching right now because you love the chill stream. I'm sorry. I'm I'm married, Susan. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't fucking ghost Mahler. I I that is unacceptable. Why is 1989 Batmobile toy so expensive? Because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's fucking the Hot Toys one. Uh, because it is awesome. Brian Snell for $2. Uh, and it's also huge. I don't know where you put it. Uh, I had to sell my tumbler. I had, I had two tumblers. Uh, but I, I had to sell it because I'm like, where in the hell am I going to put this thing? I don't have a store anymore. I had a life-size Iron Man that lit up. I had a life-size Superman. I had a life-size Batman. You want to see my life-size Superman? I'll show you my life-size Superman. Hang on a second. Hang on just a second. We will do this. Oh, I don't want to do that one. We'll do Sad Spidey. And where did it go? Oh, is it in downloads? No, is it on desktop? I just, there it is right there. Okay, so I was uh, going through some stuff and I found a picture from one of my booths at Comic-Con that NBC down in San Diego put on their website. Uh, and this is precisely the reason I bought this life-size Superman was just for this. So, uh, there we go. Can you see it? There we go. Here, I'm going to pop this up. Oh, that doesn't work. There it is. So, this made it on their website, right? That's a little picture of my booth. And, yeah, I bought this uh, life-size Superman and a life-size Batman, and I put them on each side of my booth. And every single year I was at Comic-Con, I made the news. Like, they would come and interview me or one of my staff or they would come and take pictures because I had the giant life-size Superman and Batman in front. I paid uh, uh, a couple of thousand dollars each for them. They were broken. I had somebody fix them because they were made of fiberglass. So they basically used Bondo. It, the guy who fixed it was a uh, he. Uh, you know, he owned an auto body shop, but he was also a sculptor. So he fixed these things, and I was. Uh, I made it on the cover of the Washington Times one year. I made it the cover of the San Diego Union one year. Uh, and I, again, I was interviewed at WonderCon all the fucking time because of those life-size things. You need to know how to get attention. And uh, when, when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, my dad ignored me a lot. So I learned how to get people's attention. <laughs> so, yes. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom, boom, boom. Back to you guys. Uh Howdy from Texas. You're all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. Well, howdy, partner. Joshua Tremell for $9.99 from Texas. From Texarkana. No, I don't know where you're from. Could be from Dallas or El Paso. I, I have relatives in El Paso. Catastrophe for $5. Shout out to my BFF John S. In the East Bay, yo, who is a health worker and stressing out. We both love you and enjoy your work. Thank you. I hope he's not stressing out too much. Uh, I hope he is doing well. Yeah, it, it must be... What did they tell the health workers? You're going to have to work sick? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Melissa... Mil uh, Malice... It's Malice... Malice D. Wildman for $5. And nothing to say, but just a donation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Brian Norton for 500 yen. Uh, and if you have anything, Malice, if you want to ask a question in the chat, go ahead and hit at Nerdrotic and I'll, I'll try to answer. Uh, Brian Norton for 500 yen. What is your opinion on of Mitch Williams as a comic writer and artist? Is he okay in your opinion? I like him from, uh, from the Red Letter Media Shows. Mitch Williams, Mitch Williams. I'm thinking of the reliever from uh, the Phillies. I got to look at the guy's face. Hang on. Uh, 
Is it Rich Williams? Is it Rich? Da, da, da. Yeah, I that is not ringing a bell at all, at all. But let me look at a face here. Yeah, I'll, the only Mitch Williams I know is the reliever from the Phillies. Uh, but if you're talking about Rich from Red Letter Media, uh, I like I like them all. I like them all. Uh, red, red letter media. It will be, there will be a red letter media video right after I'm done with this live stream. Okay. Jeffrey Riley. Thank you for the 500 yet. Jeffrey Riley for $5. What these SJW women really want is for us to aggressively fight back against their feminism because they get off on us being masculine. That's kind of what we were saying last night, Jeffrey, that I think they want to, they want to stir it up. Because they're bored of some of the men they're hanging around who are either walking on eggshells or, let's face it, they're, my, they, they're, they're beta orbiters, as Mrs. Nerdrotic calls them. Beta orbiters. Uh, and believe me, there can be beta orbiters around men and women. Uh, Hail Dragon Dragonlance book series, Thoughts on a Movie. Uh, I will watch any movie that's well adapted uh, with with uh, a, a fantasy, but that is hard to find, Corey. Hard to find. Thank you for the two ninety nine. Uh, now I don't know anything about Dragonlance. Know nothing about it. But if you are, I would watch a movie of any. I don't have to read the book. I didn't. I didn't play the Witcher game, and I didn't uh, read the books until right before the Witcher came out. And I like the books. They're good. They're different. They're different, but they're good. I'm used to like in the Witcher book, I'm used to more happening in my books. Uh, there's a ton of exposition in, in, in the Witcher books, but there, it's good. Uh, didn't see your response uh, to my super chat last night, by the way, some nobody, I haven't, uh, I didn't finish all the super chats last night. Uh, I will be doing a square up probably tomorrow. Thank you. I only got through like half of them. I don't know if you made it to the end of the show, some nobody, but, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we ended the show and I will do a super chat square up. Like uh, I stated that at the end of the show, but thank you. Uh, Gliz Glinzer Glinzer for $2. Why is Picard making the Bill Cosby pudding face? Oh, uh, probably cause he's guilty of something. I wanted to do, uh, I was going to do Q and a and, and, uh, square up tonight, some nobody, but I kind of want to keep this chill as much as possible. And that would get right back into the culture war stuff, which I'm trying to avoid as much as possible in the chill stream. Uh, but, uh, I'll do one tomorrow morning. It'll be done before the inquisition comes out. Some nobody. Uh, well, yeah, I can't make that promise though. I shouldn't make that promise because that's double live streaming on my channel tomorrow. I'll, you know what? Some nobody I'll read yours on the inquisition tomorrow. And if I can, uh, if it's just a few that are left, I'll read them on the inquisition. I'll, I'll, I'll pepper them in as like a Q and a, uh, Glinzer for $2. Why is Picard making the bill? Uh, you know why? Oh, in that picture, you mean? Uh, I don't know. I found that picture when I was looking for, uh, Picard faces on for a thumbnail and I liked it. So I, I just kept it. Uh, 
It's it's a it's from a meme. It's from a meme. Uh, but it's it's obviously it was from some outtake or something like that. Five Australian dollars uh, from Aunt Lee. Hey Gary, first stream I've been able to catch live from home in Sydney, Australia. Keep up the great work, brother. Peace and love. Thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep one a week chill stream where we don't talk about the culture war or anything else. Uh, not, you know what? I don't, uh, uh, I also review television and I review movies. Uh, there's just hasn't been a lot to review. There hasn't been a lot. Yeah. I, I think every single pop, well, we got to take it day by day because I don't think everything is done. I don't think the culture war is over. There will always be pop culture content. Hollywood will always do stupid stuff that we will get to talk about. So I'm not too worried about it now. But it's going to be a drier year. And we knew that going in. Even if, if this thing didn't happen. What do we got this year? I mean, this is why Disney, you know. Uh, Disney came out. They had the Avengers Endgame and Star Wars. They kind of rushed them both. I think they could have both been delayed. Well, maybe it's good they didn't now, but who saw this coming? But this year they had Black Widow and the Eternals. Not excited about either of those movies. Now, Black Widow certainly deserved a movie. I know what everybody said, and yes, they should have done it five years ago, but quite frankly, it looks like a bland movie. Straight up. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't, well, it doesn't look woke, but it's probably going to be a little woke. Let's be real. Taskmaster is probably going to be a girl or I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but as far as, you know, it's part of the story The you know, the, uh, the, the black widow program being all female, that is part of the canon. That's part of the comic book. So that's, you know, but are they going to make, you know, are they going to do the, the woke tropes? Probably. I'd be surprised if they didn't. And if they didn't, that'd be good. Is it going to be like this amazing Winter Soldier-like movie? No. And I'll tell you definitively why. Because we know how this story ends. She dies. She dies in Endgame. So uh, the one thing it can potentially do is the damage that Captain Marvel did. Which was altering the canon. Nick Fury is a big pussy now. Nick Fury is a big pussy. I, I don't respect that Nick Fury. And you know what sucks? Uh, now I'm going to get mad. You know what sucks? This is the unintentionally outwoking yourself. They, they, they race swap Nick Fury, which they did in the, in the comic book. And they drew him like Samuel L. Jackson in Ultimate Marvel. And everybody loved it. Everybody loved it because you brought in one of the biggest badasses in Hollywood. Yeah, his politics are a little crazy. I don't care. He's one of the badasses from Hollywood. Say what again? This uh, uh, He had bad motherfucker on his wallet. Bad motherfucker was on his wallet because he was a bad motherfucker. You know what they fucking did to that bad motherfucker? They removed his testicles slowly. Slowly removed his testicles. And they did it deliberately. They picked Nick Fury, who was the granddaddy of the MCU and had him be inspired by Carol and he lost his eye to a cat scratch. And I know it's been a year and it still fucking pisses me off and it's not okay. And all you little shills out there who say it is okay. You're just a shill. It is not okay. They didn't need to do that. That was unnecessary for the story. It didn't move anything forward. It broke things down. You might have got a chuckle out of it. Some people might have drank some male tears, but you undid one of your best characters and you damaged the legacy of your brand. Again, you turn a lot of people off who don't say shit. They just walk away. They're done. And these little thousand paper cuts that you've done, that you've done throughout the comics, you're now doing in the MCU. The MCU had built up some pretty fucking goodwill. But you don't look at Nick Fury the same. And you did it. You did it to a black man. You did it to a black man. So a white woman inspired a black man. 
So, so, which is okay. Everything should be okay. But see, the thing is, why couldn't he inspire her? You would, you would not damage that character. He could have mentored her. And that would have given her more character. Because remember, she was out of time. She had been missing a while. But she just knew everything. She just fucking knew everything. And you would have had a great opportunity to have a black man mentoring a white woman. It's all about togetherness. And it's okay. We want that to happen. But instead, you had to remove the testicles of a character, of, of, a, of a diverse character that was working great. And you undercut them. So you just, I, I don't know what your logic was there. Because this is the normalcy we want, right? That's the normalcy we want. But you undid all that for agenda. For fucking agenda. There was no narrative reason to do what you did other than to chop his balls off. So for anybody who says Captain America's not that woke, man, you're you're fooling yourself. Stop it. Stop it. I was fucked up what they did to Fury. And I'm mad as hell. And you know what? And, And now I don't take them seriously. I don't take Samuel L. Jackson seriously. You know how bad you have to be? And they got a couple of hack directors to come in and do that. And yeah, and it's just a joke. Sure, it made a billion dollars. So what? So did the remake of The Lion King. Uh, Captain Mar- Captain Marvel 2 ain't making a billion dollars. And the only way it's making a billion dollars is if you put Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and it gets directed by a competent person. I know they moved it up on the schedule uh, to 2022. That doesn't sound like moved up to me. That sounds moved pretty far away. That's three years. Um, Yeah, that's further out than they've done any other sequel. So, you know, for those $2 billion movies, they weren't in a hurry to make sequels to them, were they? You know, you'd think like Captain Marvel is such a hit. You'd want to come out with another one right away. I mean, they did with Spider-Man. They whipped out a Spider-Man. I didn't like either of those movies, but they were hits. I'm not going to deny that people liked them and stuff. I just didn't. Uh, But it doesn't mean they weren't hits. They were massive hits. And yeah, they whooped one out immediately. Uh, Venom, they didn't wait at all. And I liked Venom. I did. Uh, And they came out with a sequel. Why are they taking their time with Captain Marvel treating it like it was Star Wars in the 70s? Maybe because they're not in a hurry to make it? That's what I'm guessing. We can announce it on a schedule all they want. Remember, the Inhumans was on a schedule. Remember, Captain America Civil War wasn't even called Captain America Civil War. I forgot what the title was. It was it was titled something else. Remember, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was supposed to come out sooner. Yeah, Marvel schedules don't mean squat. Uh, George Malo for nine ninety nine. The problem with SJW Media is the oh, is the Puss, uh, man, you're throwing in big words here, George. Pussillanimous, the pussillanimous mouse, whether comics, films, or the, I know what you're trying to say, pussy, uh, the pussillanimous mouse. You got to, man, you got to break that down in the spelling for me, man. I am, I kicked out of three high schools. You can't put, throw in those huge words. <laughs> I'm just going to butcher them. Uh, whether comics, films, or ideology is every time they reach a new low and we call it out, they take it as a dare instead of criticism. You're exactly right. Instead of pumping the brakes, they go even lower. Be well from Texas. Hail neurotic, George Malo. Thank you. You're in Texas. You're in Tejas. What the hell's going on? Thank you for the ninety nine ninety nine, dude. I'm sorry I, I freaking butchered the hell out of that word. My apologies, but uh, it's my education, man. I, I I blame my parents. No, I blame myself. Um, yes, uh, that's what they're gonna do. Unfortunately, when they come back, they're doubling and tripling down. And I came to that realization today during the video. You see it live. If I release it, you see me kind of blow a fuse live again. Uh, because I, I, it hit me that, well, no, they're not going to change a damn thing. They are resolute. They are resolute in their self-destruction. Because they would rather, they would rather lose 
their money because it's it's not that important to them. We, we we now have a generation of whiny ass little biatches who like can't can't face being wrong it would destroy their worldview they always talk about if a female came in and wrote a she-hole book it would destroy their worldview um dana are you aware of all the writers of she-hulk go check your history okay and i'm talking about throughout every comic not just the she-hulk book team books guest appearances just I won't say a word. I'm just going to say, go check your history before you pop off young lady. So, it's not going to break my worldview. What would break my worldview is if you actually wrote a good story, Dana. (laughs) That would fucking blow me away. Uh, Reverend Todd is a member at the proto molecule level. Welcome. Uh, Shannon seven, seven, three, three for $10. Kurtzman is watching this stream in his boxers while eating cheesecake, smelling his own farts and contemplating unspeakable acts against small woodland creatures. I have said my piece. Lots of love. Thank you, Shannon for $10. <laughs> I hope Kurtzman is actually safe. I hope he is safe working on other TV shows and thinking about leaving Star Trek. That'd be great. What are your thoughts on Rush? Says Robert Meza. I am glad you asked me that. I freaking love Rush. And Neil Pert, the great Neil Pert died. I don't know if it's, I say Neil Pert. Okay. I've always said Neil Pert. I don't know if that's the actual pronunciation of his last name. I've heard people say Peart before, but I say Neil Pert. Uh, And I love Rush. Now, I don't like the later Rush. I don't. But their first six or seven albums, uh, I would say up until like 83, genius, absolute genius. And I used to listen to it like nonstop, nonstop. Some of the best music to get stoned to back when I was getting stoned, but I still love it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just... I listen to music so much. I don't listen to it much anymore. I'm actually watch YouTube. YouTube's my new music. Jury nitpicker for nine ninety nine. I did the same thing when I was a little. I did the same thing when I was little at a mini mart with the Playboys when I was buying comics. LOL. Jenny McCarthy with the Dalmatian puppies. I'll never forget the image until the day I die. Well, you are younger than I. When Jenny McCarthy was in Playboy, I was a full grown adult. Uh, who was in Playboy when I was like Farrah Fawcett? That's how old I am. Uh, jury nitpicker for a dollar ninety nine. P.S. Thank God shaving caught on. Bwahaha. Yeah, no, and it wasn't. It wasn't around when I was younger. Uh, Reverend Todd for four pound ninety nine. Busting my super chat cherry on my favorite YouTuber. Love you, mate. Love you too. Thanks. I'll be gentle. I'll be gentle. Uh, can't tell you how much your videos and live streams mean to me. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's, it's hit and miss with the videos, Reverend, with everybody right now. Somebody, even critical drinker was having problems for a little while. Uh, but he seems to be okay. But unless you're red letter media or Mahler or critical drinker, if you talk about, uh, anything other than, I don't know, the TV show, I don't know if YouTube's liking it now. They were pretty nice. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I guess it just depends on what you're interested in. I could talk about the comic shop thing all day long. Uh, I just don't know if you guys are getting tired of it or not. So uh, my plan is to mix in a Doctor Who video. Now I can release it at any time. The Doctor Who video doesn't have a time limit on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll keep them coming. I'll keep them coming. I just don't know how much interest is in the comic shop thing. Uh, I could nerd out on comic shops, but I know people like to, uh, like to laugh at snowflake and safe space and Gotham night and stuff like that. But my, this video straight up, I'm just talking about comic shops. So there's no hook. There's no snowflake and safe space or Gotham night. Now I do check in on the down votes, which are at 194,000 ladies and gentlemen, 194,000. Can we get to 200,000? Can we get to 200,000? 
Um, but I straight up get into the weeds on some of the comic stuff, which might bore the shit out of you. That's, that's why I was kind of, I was like, I don't know. People are going to like this. Uh, maybe I'll just save it for a live stream. Not that I want to bore the crap out of you in live stream, but it's more live stream appropriate material than, a, than a video. I lost my place. Give me just a second. Jeff Shaver for $9.99. No need to shout out. Just buy yourself some coffee and keep doing what you're doing amidst the chaos. Your live streams have been great entertainment and a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I will try to keep them off the big world topic. I'll do that. Yes, uh, just to reset, just in case you're coming across it. Uh, I don't, I know there's bigger things going on in the world. I, I absolutely know that. And my, I think my job, uh, what I'll try to do, I don't know if I always succeed is to keep your mind off it for a little while. Uh, and you know, maybe some of you out there are locked in and you're, you're, you know, you're not around your family or something like that. It's a way to interact with people and, uh, people in the chat. Uh, we need, we need human interaction. We're made for that. So I definitely, know, I, 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 listen, I know that when I was in down and lonely, I would listen to live radio and it would help. It would help, uh, divine dragon or watch a star Trek episode or watch Dr. Who. I mean, Dr. Who star Trek, Lord of the Rings, perfect fucking medicine for damn near everything. Um, I, I would even classic who classic who. It's so good. Oh, it's so good right now. I love it more than I ever did. I appreciate it more than I ever have. Uh, Divine Dragon 999 for two Canadian pesos. I recommend the News Flash trilogy from Mira Grant. Okay. Done. Thank you for the two Canadian pesos. Crazy Cat Guy is a member at the Jaloja level. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, we got 861 likes. If you could hit the like button, uh, I'd appreciate it. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. And if you don't like it, you can hit the dislike button or not. Do whatever you like. It's a chill stream. They need a mediocre button. Like maybe the, the thumb going sideways. Like, you know, I'm kind of into it, but I'm really not that into it. Uh, Morgan Gray for $10. Wouldn't Marvel and DC need to have decent superheroes to have good content for comic book stores for when this crisis has passed? Because Safe Space and Snowflake is not going to cut it. Morgan Gray, no. That was the whole point of my video that you didn't see today. Uh, was um, when they... Because I said it in the live stream. I said it for, on Friday Night Tights. And I actually said it in the stream before that. And then the stream before that. Sorry for the repeated behavior, but... This isn't about now. This isn't about this second. Uh, what the comic book companies need to do, and uh, I'm not being hyperbolic here. Now, comic shop owners will blow me off like they always have and go, Psst, make the little fucking noises. But this is what the industry needs to do right now. Pause completely. Absolutely stop everything because Diamond is stopped. And without Diamond, there's no fucking comic shops. You can try all your little side stuff and, and a, D DC can talk about getting alternate distributors. All, you know what that is? It's called UPS. That's going to be their alternate distributor because nobody's open right now. So pause, absolutely stop, and then come up with a legitimate plan. Car D'Angelo suggested that from Earth 2 Comics, and that's what you need to do. Until you get a plan that every, and you, I know you're competing businesses, but you're all going to fucking die if you don't come up with a plan together. This is your one moment. Each day that passes, uh, it, it guarantees the destruction of your entire industry. And it's not just when you come back. It's not just when you reopen. It is six months past that, one year past that. And is Diamond going to come back? Now, probably I would say probably at this point, but we're looking at 
losing 20 to 30% of the comic book shops over the next year. And I doubt many will make it to the next Christmas following that because the economy is not going to be good. And you know what sucks? You know what really sucks about this whole fucking thing? And I hope there are committees and I hope people want to figure this out because I want to figure this out. Um, there was a lot of creatives in, uh, in Marvel and DC who were complaining a lot, showing a lot of ingratitude. You know, and these people write funny books. They, they write funny books for a living. They draw little pictures with little balloons and, and little superheroes and men in tights. That's why Friday Night Tights is called Friday Night Tights because it's men and women in tights. And they're fun. And they wanted to use them to make people uncomfortable, to shape minds as political platforms. And now look, look what you've done. Look what you've done. And you took yourself way too seriously. And you were angry about it. You were angry. Why, why are you angry? Why are comic shop owners threatening other artists' life? I mean, you write funny books for a living. I hope you learn some gratitude, but they're not. That's the thing. And that's, that's what I know pisses you guys off the most because it pisses me off the most is the ingratitude. Mm-hmm. Is like, why is Kelly Sue DeConnick look so goddamn angry when she was gifted, gifted a superhero that she had no business writing at all? And the proof was in the pudding, my dear. Uh, I know you got a bunch of Eisners. I know you know you didn't earn those. So, um, and the book sold like shit. So there you go. Um, yeah. So when you come back, you're going to sell them Snowflake and Safe Space. You're going to bring back Kelly Sue DeConnick. Zoe, Zoe Quinn's going to write a comic book. It's going to be the same bullshit. And guess what? Comic shops are dead. You're going to lose more customers. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you on YouTube and Indiegogo. And good luck with that. Hope you have a really good personality. I could tell you right now, Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, yeah, start a YouTube channel. See what happens. Maybe I'm wrong. Dana Schwartz should start a, start a YouTube channel too. Uh, because she will get one season of She-Hulk. That's going to be an expensive show. I mean, you're going to have to get somebody and you're going to have to CG it. Because they're not going to do... I mean, they're not going to do the sexy She-Hulk. They're going to do the, the horrific, muscly one. Uh, that's the one they're probably going to do. Uh, and even though they have a pretty decent artist on it, it still looks horrific. Uh, Morgan Gray, thank you very much for the $10. Tokyo Gaijin is a member at the Proto Molecule level. Welcome, Tokyo Gaijin. I uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for staying up late. I appreciate it. We're at 902 likes. I, I appreciate that. Uh, it's sad because like comics are simple. They really are. They really are. Ed 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 Bennis is is drawing or drew the horrifically muscle She Hulk, and he's like one of the best artists. He did Superman and Batman with Jeff Loeb. That was freaking great. Com- or Batman and Superman. Sorry, um, I put Superman first. Uh, great comic in the mid aughts. I loved it. Loved it. Um, yeah, it looks like crap. Uh, plant, uh, plantation sensation for five dollars. Uh, if a distributor could do monthly collections of five to six comics from the previous month, all in one large Shonen Jump esque package, it would sell great. Um, if the comics were good, see the thing with the Shonen Jump esque package is Shonen Jump is filled with things people want to read, manga trounces the American comic book industry because the American comic book industry doesn't have top-notch talent anymore. It's watered down with a bunch of alternative press Cal freaking arts people who don't like superheroes, never have liked superheroes. As a matter of fact, the Kelly Sudaconics of the world, yeah, I've seen them before. I've walked by them. I've talked to these people. You know where I've seen them before? Alternative press expos. The most anti-superhero thing there is on the planet. Alternative press expo is zines, underground comics, what I used to like to call jazz comics. 
Now, I know some of you out there like jazz, no offense, but jazz is music for musicians. I can't stand listening to it. It just sounds like people doing scales. And I know there's an art form to it. And I know some people like it. I don't. I'm not a fan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm not a fan. Um, but that's what, uh, but they have, it definitely has a place. And I know that's where the most technically sound music is being played. I just don't like it. Um, I like punk rock, which is the least technically sound music ever made. Uh, but it's filled with raw passion. Rah, that's what I like. Um, Jim Diesel for five pounds. Now that's not true for all punk rock bands. Okay. Hashtag not all. Did you see CBS use stock film footage for Picard? I sent you the link on Instagram. Jim, thank you for the link. Uh, I was aware. Yes, I was aware of that. Actually, uh, Tom pointed that out. Uh, and I pointed that out on a, on one of my live stream reviews. Yes, I was aware, uh, that they used stock footage for a, the dead earth Fox and for the robot. And it's, it's shameful. It, it's shameful. And it shows you how lazy they are. And I, I, I don't know what to say at this point, the people who like star Trek Picard and, and that bless their heart. I mean, there are people who genuinely like it. And then there's people who say they like it because they want to get, uh, they want to get in with CBS. They, they want to be shills. So they'll, they are willing to say everything. And I hate to tell those people that CBS doesn't respect them and they'll never invite them in ever. They might throw them a bone. You know, they might, Hey, if you'll do this for me, we might, uh, send you a screener or some crap like that. But they truly don't respect you, but keep doing what you're doing. It's fine. Uh, Tokyo Gaijin for 1000 yen. I now watch star Trek Voyager shedding tears. I got so much shade when it ran, but after star Trek discovery and star Trek Picard Voyager is so fucking cool. The sheer fucking hubris of Kurtzman makes me gag. Yeah, what he did to Seven of Nine. Uh, and folks, um, there was somebody who would consist, I can't remember who it was, who would consistently make this argument in my chats during Star Trek Discovery Season 1. And I didn't believe this person. I wish I could remember their name. But I completely believe them now. Alex Kurtzman is doing his best. He is. He's just really bad at his job. He's just horrifically bad at his job. He's like one of the least talented people in Hollywood. And what he has done to Star Trek, at, at this point, I'm past anger. And I, I just marvel at the stupidity. And you know what? You don't, don't listen to me. Fine. Fine. Red Letter Media. Millions of subs. Very respectable take on a lot of movies. Now, I don't agree with them on everything. They don't know who I am, and I doubt they would agree with me on stuff. They would probably consider me a hater or nerd crew or whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, but I respect their opinion uh, on Star Trek. Robert Meyer Burnett, very respectable guy. Works in the industry. Likes a lot of things I don't, but that's okay. But we, you know what? We agree on actually probably most things uh, when it comes to comics and stuff. We probably agree on most things. Co-host of the John Campia show and quite frankly, the brains of the operation, if you know what I'm talking about. Like the one true blue nerd on that show is Robert Meyer Burnett. Not saying John Campia isn't a nerd. I'm just saying Rob Robert Meyer Burnett has... He has a lot more nerd knowledge. Um, he doesn't like the show. Now, Jeremy Johns liked it, but I don't agree with Jeremy Johns like ever. So, uh, but yet he's got millions of subs and you know, he seems like a nice guy. I got nothing bad to say about him. He doesn't seem like a dick or anything like that. I just don't agree with him on uh, star Trek discovery. I think it's a horrifically bad take. Um, it's a bad show. I mean, objectively, a horrifically bad show. If it was mediocre, I'd be praising it. 
I'd be praising it if it was mediocre because I said that before it started. I said, I'm going to give this show a chance. I'm going to give it more of a chance than I would give Star Trek Discovery because I like Sir Patrick Stewart. I want this to succeed. I want us all to have some good Star Trek so we can kumbaya this shit and have a good time and we can just talk about some good Star Trek and look forward to more good Star Trek. Now, I knew it would suck. People will call that biased. I would call that Learning from your mistakes, believing that Kurtzman can write something good. Um, he can't. Star Trek Picard wasn't good. It was ridiculous. Do you know they killed Picard? You know they killed him and he's dead. They made a copy of him. Where And the, the funniest thing is it ends up being meta for the show. They killed Picard and made a bad copy of him that looks kind of like Picard so he can go experience the white guilt because he didn't experience enough through a season one completely because he's a th- synthetic now and people are racist against synthetics. So now he's a synthetic and he can experience the racism as a white man. Isn't that great? That's almost like taking a white man and making him a black man and making him experience the racism. Wonder how that would play. Uh, you know what, instead of experiencing it, how about understanding it? How about using alien races as allegory like you did in the past? And how about Picard taking us through this one last adventure where like in old Star Trek, we would see a couple of alien races and that could be the allegory and we could learn through that. No, no, they had to go one further. They had to deconstruct Picard like they did to Luke. They had to, they had to Jake Skywalker his ass. So it's very sad, very sad what happened. So yes, I'm taking my time with this shit because I'm sick and tired of these fools. But uh, yeah, and, you know, listen, they're going to come for other stuff like Lord of the Rings and thank God they can't touch it. They can't touch Lord of the Rings. It's a perfect story. Kurtzman, <laughs> Kurtzman probably, would, Kurtzman doesn't understand Lord of the Rings. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing I dare say, I don't want to, I don't, I speak for myself, but I would say the vast majority of the fandom menace and comics gate and all of the other people just want a good story. They don't need a message through their star Wars and star Trek and doctor who and comics. They just want a good story. Uh, and what better vehicle for your message than a good story, but As I've said before, if the message comes first, then you're lost. You've lost your story. Uh, I think the biggest problem in Hollywood right now is being inspirational, being positive, uh, being heroic, being fun is lost. It's Hollywood is so jaded and nasty. Just the culture in that town times up. Didn't help it. It made it worse. Times up was supposed to clean up all the toxic masculinity, but they forgot to clean up the toxic femininity. (laughs) See, because it wasn't toxic masculinity. It, it, It was nasty people, nasty people. There's a lot of very good people in Hollywood. And you don't get very far in that town if you're nice. So the entire culture needs to change. J- Dave Chappelle said it. Dave Chappelle said it. It's, it's a cultural problem within Hollywood that is not specific to race, gender, or anybody. Anybody can be a coked up asshole. And they end up that in Hollywood, unfortunately. And again... The power structure there is based on, I mean, it is a brutal Roman power structure. Kill or be killed, backstab your best friend. The only friends you have are strategic friends. You don't have any genuine friends who would, who love you, who will stick with you thick or thin. No, you'll have friends who will mostly stick with you. But if you find another friend who can get you a role or, you know, get you some lower level gig at Technicolor or something like that. That's a better friend to have. That's why I hightailed it out of there. Uh, I was not built for a place like that. 
um, behaviorally, I wasn't as evolved. I'm not saying I'm an evolved person or anything, but I was not as evolved as I was today back then. So when people would wrap me out to the boss when I was like a couple of minutes late or something like that, because I drove from San Francisco, uh, I would confront them. I guess they didn't like that stuff, but I would confront them and they weren't used to it. Uh, fortunately I, yeah, I never got written up or anything cause I had a really important job and nobody else wanted to take it <laughs> cause it was 6 PM to 6 AM. So yeah, I could, a guy, a guy ratted me out and, uh, yeah, I, I got in his face. I just got in his face and I just said, you know, and, and it wasn't even mean or anything when you confront anybody. I mean, they fall to pieces down there. So, I mean, you don't have to be all, what's up? I'm just like, dude, why'd you do that? And it's, you know what? I believe him when, you know, because he was stuttering all over himself. He just did it because that's what everybody does down there. Okay. I had another guy. I had another guy trying to, I mean, I'm. It's, this sounds paranoid, but uh, listen, I knew it was happening, but I couldn't prove it. But then later, the guys, one of my, one of the project managers told me it happened. So confirmed. I had a, I had a $16 hour, $16 an hour job that was on top of my comic shop owner, a $16 an hour job that was going to turn into a $20 an hour job, but I had to train at the time I was taking the night shift and the guy during the day shift was going to train me. It was chaptering iTunes videos. So this is back when iTunes had little movies and stuff and I would put the chapters in and it wasn't even, you didn't even name them. It was you would pick a time point and you go chapter one, chapter two, and just insert it. And it was like easy. He showed me how to do it. I figured it out. It was fine. Things were working fine. But then all of a sudden the guy got paranoid that I was going to take his day job. And it was a, over a, a off the cuff comment. We were talking and I was joking when I said, oh, I love to get the day job. I wasn't serious. I actually preferred the night job. I didn't mind it. I'm a night person. And I can uh, work the night job, but he thought I was coming after his job. So he started sabotaging my work. So I get the work the next day and the manager would be all pissed that all the chapters for all the movies were wrong. I'm all, how's that possible? You'd have to be a complete tard to, to, to ruin this. And that's what they thought I was. And I couldn't prove it. So I'm like, I must really suck. Holy shit. I'm terrible. And I felt, I felt awful. You know, I mean, I, I, it, it sucks. You're at a, you're a boss at one job. At, at one job, I'm a boss. I'm telling pl- employees what to do. At another job, I'm like lowest to the lowest level. This was because of the recession. And I got some peon sabotaging me for a 16 hour. Do- it's like, dude, you could have the job, bro. Uh, it's, uh, it's not that much to me. I just needed this as a stepping stone to get somewhere else. Uh, which I eventually got to anyway, which is technical, but, um, holy shit, but that's normal down there. That's, they do little, just put a, put a knife in your back for a 16 to 18. Uh, people are just desperate down there. And that was before all this shit happened. So I don't know. Hollywood's a bad place. It's a bad place. Uh, your boy, Zach talked about it in a video. You think being a writer for a major TV show, you would live in a nice a suburban house. You make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. No. So when I was living down there, I rented a room. I mean, I own a house, but when I was, li- I was working down in LA, so I rented a room. So during the week I'd have a little place to sleep. Uh, the room was like $600 a month and it was in a house with seven other people. Those seven other people, two of them were writers on the big bang theory. <laughs> <laughs> they, these people didn't have, they didn't make. So Zach told this story that, yeah, if you're writing on a TV show, if you get an option movie, you're probably going to be in an apartment in Van Nuys. Dude, I was in an apartment in Van Nuys <laughs> with writers of major TV shows. The guy's name was Gary. I can't remember his last name. I re- only remember his first names because we had the same name. George Malo, welcome to the Gandalf level. Awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, it's it's uh it's not what it's cracked up to be. Now, if you're like Seth MacFarlane, it's good life. It's a good life. 
But uh, also, if you're a producer on uh, any of these shows, you're working your ass off. I mean, like 14 hours, 16 hour, 20 hour days. And I'm not even joking. Uh, this is for Miss, Mrs. Nerdrotic for not killing you after being cooped up for all this long. Says Brian Yoder for $10. I will pass that on. <laughs> Day ain't over yet, Br- Byron. Day ain't over yet. NK33 for $2. Jody Doc was a, f- a pharaoh, wo- hura and Aphis Rises. Man, you guys are killing me tonight. Jody Doc was a pharaoh, hura and Aphis Apsis, Aps His Rises. I totally butchered that. That has got to be a reference. And I'm not getting it right now because, I don't know, I'm just dumb. Clip that sound. <laughs> Thank you, NK33, for the $2. Uh, by, uh, Brian Norton for 2 I'm going to try to figure that out, NK3. Jody Doc was a pharaoh. Hoorah. And app his apps his rises. Sorry, I meant Freddie Williams. Freddie Williams. Freddie Williams. Freddie Williams. Uh, he did seven soldiers. Was that with, uh, wasn't that Grant Morrison? What else did he do? I know. Okay. I, I had to look at his face. What do I think of this guy's art? It's good. I'm trying to look at what I've read. Uh, 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 by him. It's from Kansas city. Seven Soldiers, right? Seven's Grant Morrison's Seven Soldiers. That had to be because that was during my time. Uh, 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 where is that? There it is, right there. Yep. Okay. Yes. Seven Soldiers Victory. I remember that work. Yeah, he's dope. I love the Seven Soldiers. It didn't sell that well. I thought it was good. I actually have it. Uh, and it's because it, I like Zatanna. I'm a big fan of Zatanna. I like fishnets. Uh, very good artist. Very good artist. He's a youngster. Uh, Brian Snell for five dollars. What is better movie, Kroll or Ice Pirates? Kroll. Oh, Kroll. Way the fuck better. Kroll's the shit. Uh, bonjour. What's your favorite Kubrick film? Hmm. 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 That's tough. Clockwork Orange. It's a dark, nasty ass film, but it's my favorite film. And a film that could never be made ever again. Love The Shining, though. I do love The Shining. 2001's great, too. It is. Uh, Here, here, says Yodam Darkstar for $2. Thank you very much, Yodam Darkstar. I appreciate it. And thank you, Halcoholic, by the way. Uh, who asked me about my favorite Kubrick film. But yes, it's uh, it's Clockwork Orange. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, I watched it a lot as a youngster. Pornos have better writing than Jar Jar Abrams. Yes, they do. They make more sense, especially the 70s porn. They actual had stories. Cesar Sosa, 
for a uh, dollar ninety nine. I agree with that. Porno for Pyros. It's a good band too. TJ Paris for five dollars. My mom has loved Trek since the original series aired and was excited to see Picard. She gave up as soon as they said Federation abandoned the Romulans. She did, huh? I, I keep hearing stories that people gave it a chance and right around the fourth episode. And what episode was that? That was when they went to find Elrond of Rivendale, Romulegolo, sister boy himself. And the same thing happened with Star Trek Discovery. People gave it till about the fourth episode, then they dipped. And then they were, when they returned, there was diminishing returns. When did they dip out of Jody Whitaker's C, uh, series? Fourth episode of series 11 they dipped then it was diminishing returns after that i guarantee you the star trek discovery ratings went down just as much as the doctor who ratings i bet you the percent the percentages of of uh of loss are damn near equal but we'll never know because we're in a content war uh, now I'm hearing rumors that we're going to get more Star Trek. We're going to get more Kurtzman Star Trek. And I just say, go right a fucking head. No skin off my back. You've already killed the franchise, but I can continue laughing at you because it's funny. George Malo for 1999 question, Gary, why? Oh, why did Jackson not use the same film methods for the Hobbit film series? I liked it, but it didn't look or feel epic like Lord of the Rings. Tomorrow will be a Lord of the Rings extended edition fest. My best to you and yours, sir. Thank you very much. I'm going to probably go to bed watching it tonight. The reason is he wasn't on the project from the get go. It was Guillermo del Toro who bailed out on the project. And please, Guillermo del Toro fans, I know you guys are passionate. You're like Snyder Cut people. I understand. You like the man. I've met the man. I've held his sketchbook. I love his Hellboy movies. Love them. Freaking love them. He bailed on the project. He did. Now, I know I've heard excuses, excuses, but it's the first story I hear that's usually the truth. And he bailed on the project. He probably was too much. He wasn't really into it. And the first film had his fingerprints all over it. Um, that doesn't free Peter Jackson from responsibility. He could have told the people, hey, we just lost our director. We need to start from scratch. But he was a team player. Um, also... Lord of the Rings and The Fifth Element were both movies that benefited from not having the technology. They were forced to be creative. Both those directors were given a chance later to make very similar films and they were given too many tools and they made kind of hot messes that I still like. But you can tell that they shot outside scenes indoors that annoys the shit out of me. It was just a sunny sky. You can shoot that inside. Fucking Gandalf sitting in front of Bilbo's, uh, Bil sitting in front of Bag End, right? And they're in a goddamn soundstage and it's an outside scene. Jesus Christ, man. You have the set built. And you can tell some of those scenes were shot in, a, in front of a green screen. For whatever reason, I don't know. Because it's harder to film outside. I don't know film outside Lord of the Rings. It's a completely different looking movie than the Hobbit. I love the Hobbit, but Ho the Hobbit's almost like a cartoon to me. It is the orcs uh, don't look, I mean, they're animated and I know why they changed the look because the, listen, folks, there was criticism. There was that the orcs, I mean, just there was, and, uh, I don't agree with that criticism. All you would have to do is, if you look at the orcs, some are blue, some are some are some are black, some are white, some are green. I mean, they're all different colors. They're orcs. They're they're supposed to be demons. Uh, a lot of them were played by women. A lot of the goblins played by women. That's right. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I don't have the figure right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one goes, ha, let's have some meat. I'm pretty sure that's a girl. 
I know one of them, I'm watching the special features and like, the, I was surprised how many of them were women and which was great, which was great. Uh, you couldn't tell until you saw him walk. Then you can tell raging Festus for $2. Uh, welcome, welcome. And streams keep my mind off of internet gas cramps. Yeah. I hate internet, internet gas cramps are horrible. My God. Well, I'm glad I'm a cure for that. You got something. Hey, Gary, strange passing by Mission Comics closed all the time. Been watching Classic Who on Pluto for free. Yes, Classic Who is for free on Pluto. Anthony Pride. So you're in the hood. You're in the hood. So Mission uh, Leafs Shop, uh, Mission Comics and Art. Uh, I shot a documentary in his shop and my shop. For free comic book day, which I do believe you can find on Vimeo. Hang on. Yeah, I can't play it because it's got copyrighted music in it. Uh, but I can show you without sound. I'll just show you a sec. I'm not going to bore you with it. I'm just going to show you a second. This, uh, this was from my film school. And this is in my shop and in Leaf shop. And it was the 24 hour comic book day. So you had to write, draw and, and finish a comic book in 24 hours. They still do it. And the winners get into some graphic novel and I hosted it a couple of years. So I decided to do a documentary on it. So we're just going to see a second of it, okay? Again. And yes, Entropy Comics was the name. I, I was a comic publisher for a little while, and it was called Entropy Comics. Yes. So I put a bunch of Ocean's Eleven music in the background because I freaking dug it. So there's the front of my shop. And uh, I shot and directed and edited all this stuff. I mean, it's just handheld. Oh, there's my son when he was looking. Oh, my God, look at how little he is. Hang on. Sorry. Oh, my God. I want to see my little beanie. Right there. Oh my God, look at how friggin' cute he was. That was a long time ago. So that's my oldest. There's Rick Lucy, Jaime Crespo, and I can't remember anybody else. Uh, these are all artists. I was all fancy and pretentious, and I called it 24 Pages. Uh, that one, I forgot her name. But she, sorry, she's been published. Hang on. Why did I do that? Sorry. Uh, but this one right here, I, yeah, she's the one who was published, I believe. There's Jaime Crespo. That's, guy, that's a good guy right there. Look at that cell phone. So, yeah, it's everybody just drawing. And this is just the beginning. And then you get into, like... There's Leaf right there from Mission Comics. And he had just opened at this time. Ah, uh, there's Joe Borelli. Ah, uh, that's my old boy. That's my boy, Joe Borelli. And yeah, that, that's in my shop. That's Rick Lucy. Oh, I love how they I set up this shot. Look, they're right in front of Batman's crotch. You see his belt right there, and you see his bulge right over Brian's shoulder right here. You see his little cod piece bulge? Hang on. That's Russell, my old manager. That's Jaime. Oh, that's it. Over. I wonder if I... Is there any shots of my actual shop? 
That's his shop. Where's my shop? He's cross-eyed. He doesn't mean to be, though. I hated her. I couldn't stand her. I wanted to kick her out of the shop. She annoyed the shit out of me. Um, yeah, that's it. So, sorry to bore you guys. But, yeah, that's... Uh, I Yes, I did own a comic shop. That is true. Okay. Uh, David A. Scovetta for $1.99. Gary, love your stream. Thank you. R.I.P. Picard. Yes, R.I.P. Picard. R.I.P. Picard. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this because I am just fucking around right now. Uh, but Anthony, that was for you. Little old mission comics and art from, uh, yeah. Uh, Kurt for $19.99. Enjoy your show. Thanks for keeping us sane. You are quite welcome. You are quite welcome. Uh, thank you for keeping me sane. I appreciate you keeping me sane. Uh, Rob at Altis for $5. Was there a starship porn? Was there st any starship porn in STP? Nothing jumps to mind. None. No, none. The ships were horrible. Terrible. They were too thin. They were too thin. And then the, and then, the, then, uh, I swear to God, the, the new ships for the Federation, it was all the same ship and it looked like concept ships from the eighties. They were so poorly designed. They don't care. People okayed that stuff. Like they were missing effect shots. And if you really look, people haven't really looked at this and I don't think they will. Okay. Like you have somebody like Mahler and critical drinker and red letter media looking over Star Wars with a fine tooth comb, but nobody's really taking that, not even red letter media to Star Trek because it would take too fucking long and it's too miserable of experience. I am trying and I don't, and I'm not as good as those guys, but I I'm trying and it's very difficult. They don't care. They miss so many things because they don't care. And that is the most frustrating part. It is one thing to care like Zack Snyder tried. Okay. His films not succeeding and stop. Okay. Batman versus Superman is not some misunderstood work of genius. Okay. It's not. I like some parts of it. It's got a fantastic cast, except for Jesse Eisenberg as fucking Lex Luthor is fucking terrible. He brings down damn near the whole movie and killing Superman at the end. You just, I mean, dude, it was, you put three stories into one. You did too much at once. I still will watch the movie. And when it comes to justice league, I want to see the Snyder cut, but guys, it was a poorly, it, it, but Zack Snyder tried. Okay. I respect Zack Snyder. He fucking tried. And it's not like the fall of Skywalker. That's why I can watch a Batman versus Superman and enjoy parts of it. Cause I did like Ben Affleck as Batman quite a bit. I think he's the best Batman we've had. I do. The most comic book accurate, the most accurate costume and that one little scene in the warehouse. Fucking love it. I can watch it over and over again. But Zack Snyder did try. Okay. He tried. So there's effort in that. So it wasn't like he just went in there and didn't give a fuck. That's what Alex Kurtzman did. Okay. He's in there mucking around and not giving a fuck. Zack Snyder did try to do something different. He did. And I understand what he tried to do. It was just the wrong thing to do. Um, the DC universe, uh, my understanding of it, something I've been, you know, reading for decades is it's not the new fucking 52. Okay. And that's what they tried to do. They've just made it too fucking dark, too dark. Superman is too dark. Sorry. And that's Hollywood's problem. That is Hollywood's problem. And it might have been an, a, a decision above Zack Snyder. And, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was. You have the right Superman. I mean, like Chris Nolan should never have been involved with that. 
And maybe he set the tempo. Maybe it's not Zack Snyder's fault. Chris Nolan is the wrong person for Superman. The thousand percent wrong person for Superman. And I don't know if anybody in Hollywood can be inspiring. I don't know. Uh, Trek Dog. Hang on a second. Uh, but, I mean, listen. I own them. <laughs> a guilty as charged. I own all the DC films. I own Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman. Uh, I own the Man of Steel Special Edition. I, You know what? There's parts of the Man of Steel that I like. There are. Uh, it was just too drab at some points. It, it, it lacked... Um, it wasn't fun. And Superman does need to be fun. You need to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, but there were parts of it I, I dug and I love the music. Oh my God, the music was great. Uh, like it's nowhere near as good as John Williams. But uh, yeah, you know, it's got its good points and its bad points. And, and you know, yeah, letting his dad die was fucking retarded. But excuse my language, but that that's the way it was. Uh, da, 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 but uh, yeah, I, I own them all. I own them all. I want them. I didn't want them to give up on that universe though at all because i saw that they could have made something really good but they pulled the plug and they do what warner brothers does because they have no confidence in their character and i think that probably is what kept Zack snyder from i don't know because Zack snyder's pretty decent at adapting stuff watchmen is like in my top 10 favorite movies ever so yeah you know and I know the Marvel and DC guys like to go at each other and they start going after Marvel movies. And listen, you can't defend your DC movie by going after a Marvel movie. You can't. Um, DC does not have an Avengers. It does not have a Guardians of the Galaxy. It does not have a Winds, uh, or Winter Soldier. I almost said Winds of Winter. Uh, it doesn't have an Iron Man 1. You know, it doesn't. But there are uh, some, some turds too, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, some some films are completely overrated. Uh, and maybe I'll talk about those someday. Uh, Hail Gary, uh, just from some love for your channel, Friday Night Tights, was awesome. I laughed so hard. By the way, it was a fake German money, not British money. Kept, kept, kept it rolling. All right. Fake German money. That's right. That damn fake German money. You want to see some fake money? Here are some prop. This is an actual prop from uh, from the Runaway Bride. The Runaway Bride. This is screen used pounds. Uh, this is what came out of the ATM machine, and it's got David Tennant, and it has the producer. So this is cool. They got little TARDIS on them. There's some fake money. Okay. Uh, yeah, Friday Night Tights was epic. Uh, Critical Drinkers, welcome back. He said he would come back. And uh, I don't know. I mean... I don't want to obligate as, but I kind of would like him to be a regular, <laughs> but that is up to him as, can, if, as yeah, uh, you know, he can say yes or no whenever he wants. That's fine. But I, I kind of want as to be a regular people freaking love him. I love him. So he's what a, uh, just a funny guy, man. You know what, you know, what's great about as I want to get, uh, I eventually want to get to, to my channel where as is it with his channel is that he didn't give a fuck. He's going to make a video on whatever the hell he wants. And, uh, you know, I'm not there yet. And it's, uh, and, uh, but I will be someday. I think there'll be a point. I told this to my patrons. I think there'll be a point where, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to get to a million subs. I don't want to try to get to a million subs. Um, I didn't try to get this far to be honest with you. I didn't think I'd make it this far. So it's pretty, it's brilliant. It's brilliant, but things are so uncertain and strange right now. I'm not going to stress over it, but I think, you know, once I get to a certain point, I'm just going to not give a shit about, I'm kind of there anyway, about growing. 
Uh, but I mean, luckily it is. And thank you. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and thank you everyone who supports the channel. Uh, I'm not going to change anything, uh, other than, you know, I'll probably do more retro reviews cause I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I'm having fun though. I'm having fun. Even now I know it sucks now and I know not everybody is having fun now and I don't mean to rub anything in anybody's face. Uh, I'm having fun doing these. And uh, hopefully you are too. Shit is serious though. Shit is very serious. Uh, my hope is, my hope is, but I hope it's not a strategy, that this was all overblown and we can get mad about it later. Thank you, Trek Dog. KMFS for $5. Hi, Gary. And this sucks. Out of work, but I want to send you some love your way. Oh, you, oh, come on. Kai, Kai, thank you for the $5. I truly, I mean, I love the sentiment. And I don't mean to be disrespectful. I wish I could send that right back. You're out of work, Kai. Just come in, send the love. I'll keep an eye out for you in the chat, please. If you guys are out of work, um, you know, you got to hang on, you know, to whatever you can. That I mean, like, uh I want to so bad go on eBay and get a couple of comic books. So I'm like, uh, I now I did. I bought a couple, but I've like leveled out because, you know, I don't know. Chances are, wouldn't it, you know, when I'm just throwing it out there again, I have no information on this. So, so right now we're looking at uh, through June, but wouldn't it be smart to overestimate at this point and maybe lift it a little early? That would make you look extremely popular, wouldn't it? Now, maybe I'm just hoping for the best, but it's just a thought. It's just a thought. And it's not like we don't have a bunch of time on our hands to think about shit right now. So, yeah. Thank you, Kai. Please take care of yourself. Uh, are you furloughed? What's going on? Uh, I mean, like, you know, I hope you're okay. NK33 for $2. Have you seen Backish's Lord of the Rings? Good, bad. Yes, good. Except for the Balrog scene. Uh, I was asked that uh, a couple of live streams ago. Um, I love the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, but the Balrog scene is garbage. It's a person with a with a garbage bag, like over. I mean, if you guys have seen it, you know the Balrog scene in Lord of the Rings. That's the, I mean, honestly, when I was watching that in the theaters, that was the first time I was just in absolute awe since I saw Star Wars. I mean, seeing a giant freaking winged flaming demon, I was watching like a Dio cover come to life and it was awesome. And that's when I knew like, this is going to be my favorite movie right at that fucking moment. The whole, you shall not pass because I had seen it in the animated series. I had read it in the book and you know, for some reason I didn't fucking see it like that. And I went, Oh, that, Oh, that's what it's supposed to be. You know, and, and yeah, I, I knew what a Balrog was, but I just didn't see it like that. And I was just jaw dropped. I'm like, oh, and that whole scene when they're running from them and the, you get that. They take that shot of the, the bridge of Casa Doom, right? And the hobbits are running across it and you have to one, run across it one at a time. And they take that shot like directly above and the music and it's all, whoo, 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 whoo. Oh my God. It's so good. Get you fucking ready. I love fucking, oh my God. That and King Theoden's speech make me want to go to war in a good way though. Uh, Bakshi's uh, Lord of the Rings is good. Siffy Freak for $10. I need some advice. I'm writing a story. Should I stick to Amazon's, go to a prisoner ship, or go forward to the king's throne room? What do you think? Um, Amazon's, because, I mean, it's women. I always want to hang out with women. I know I'm considered a, a misogynist or whatever, but uh, if I'm given Amazon's prison ship or king's throne room, I'm going to take my chances with the Amazon's, because they might take me prisoner. 
It's what I'm hoping for. A little torturing, you know. I don't know. Uh, I I would well I you know honestly if it was me writing a story if we're not being serious I'd do all three. I would I would go to the Amazons and I would take the Amazons to the prison ship where I'd probably have a friend. Uh, but I don't know what other references it is. But uh, I would do all three. The king's throne room. The Balrog scene was so fracking awesome. It, Tim F. It was fucking awesome. Uh, the best Lord of the Rings content ever was Leonard Nimoy's Bilbo Baggins. That was one of the strangest nerd crossovers uh, ever. Uh, I uh, says Mad Mardigan for five dollars. I watch Game of Thrones season seven while rewatching your reviews. Wow, crazy season seven. Oh, you're what? Hey, Mad, that is. That is a deep dive into some deep nerdrotic lore because I think uh, that's what made me discouraged on doing season eight. I'm like, well, shit, you know, nobody watched my season one. I did one from uh, my father-in-law's house while I was at Comic-Con. I remember the episode, too, was the one with uh, Euron Greyjoy on the thumbnail. Uh, you really made it fun. You were so disappointed, but that evolves... Uh, uh, but that evolves not to not even caring. It does. It does. If you watch that last episode, I was fucking, I was like, what the hell? John and there, everybody was like, hashtag boat sex. And all the normies were all boat sex. I'm all, fuck boat sex. This is stupid. They just met. Why are they banging? I don't understand this at all. So by the way, John and Daenerys aren't hooking up in the books, folks. They are not, they're going to go to war against each other. If John lives, I'm pretty sure John's going to live. Here's how I think he's going to get resurrected. Uh, by the way, spoilers, sorry. Jon Snow, where it stands in the book, some of you showrunner, uh, show watchers might not know this. Uh, Jon Snow is still bleeding to death in the snow. We've been waiting nine years. That's why this one is particularly bad is Jon Snow is lying dying in the snow and we've been waiting nine years to see if he resurrects him or not. And there's no guarantee George is going to, now I think he will. Cause if George was going to kill him, he would have just fucking killed him. My guess though, is everybody is thinking Melisandre, Melisandre is going to, going to resurrect him. Wrong. George famously sets anything he sets up. It's predictable. The, you know what? I think one of these things he's going to actually have come through, but everything he sets up gets subverted. Every fucking thing. This is where these assholes in Hollywood got it from. They started plucking it from George, but they don't understand it. You have to set up expectations within your story, with your characters. You don't do it with somebody else's, or you don't do it with somebody else's story. You do it within your story, with your characters. And Jon Snow will be resurrected by Lady Stoneheart, not Melisandre. Everybody thinks it's going to be Melisandre. Melisandre. Uh, she is going to, um, she's going to probably burn Cherie, and it won't work. And it won't work. And George will leave it up to you. But I think. He's kind of setting up a little redemption for Cat. Because Cat was a biatch. She was fucking horrible. She was nicer in the show. Cat was dumb. And she she started, she, I mean, she practically started a war. I mean, she did start a war. And gave Rob a bunch. I mean, Rob did some stupid shit too. But gave Rob, what was funny is when she started giving Rob good advice, he, she had already broken his trust. So when she started telling him good things, he wouldn't listen to her. And then he got himself killed. But um, I think uh, because she got her life force from uh, Beric Dondarrion, the Lightning Lord, I think she's going to do the same for John. Because uh, she was starting to feel a little guilty about how she treated that boy, how she treated John, which was terrible.
So yeah, I th- I don't think it's Melisandre is going to bring her back. And I don't think Stannis is going to lose. I, I think uh, Stannis is a, is out there marching in the snow on his way to Winterfell. As a matter of fact, we're gonna we're gonna read something. I know. Oh, wait, there's still 1,200 people. Let's let's read a little. One of my favorite speeches from Game of Thrones, shall we? Since I, I was planning on on reading this, but I didn't think I would tell the story. So uh, Stannis is alive. He is marching to Winterfell. They're stuck in this horrible autumn autumn winter storm. It's not an actual winter storm. It's a snowstorm, but it's still not officially winter yet. Um, and the Boltons are hold, hold up in Winterfell, which they rebuilding. They got a fake Arya that they married to Ramsay. And they forced Theon to give her away. So they made him a prince again. And because they thought they had broken him so down, so far down that he's just basically their slave now. But in building him back up, it brings Theon back and we're getting Theon back. But Theon is like, he's, you know, he's missing fingers. He's missing teeth and he just wants to die in battle at this point. Uh, but then he gets, uh, there's, there's a great murder mystery going on and there's this whole Northern conspiracy. It's fucking amazing. And I can't believe Dan and Dave left all this shit on the floor. The Northern conspiracy is, I mean, that could have entertained us for two seasons. God damn it. This, I'm going to start getting mad about this. So Theon Greyjoy's make, there's this great redemptive ta- tale with Theon Greyjoy that they just completely are passed over in the show, fucking morons, making him a little subservient to his sister. And the thing is, you, you see the biggest difference between woke storytelling and real storytelling between George and Dan and Dave. Dan and Dave took Yara, who is Asha, Theon's sister, and made her kind of a dumb Mary Sue. I mean, she's not totally Mary Sue because she gets caught, but I mean, whatever. But he's just like, you know, he basically, you're McQueen too. And they don't show her as a true badass because they cut her out of half of the show. Plus, I didn't like the actress playing her. She doesn't look like her at all. But the, uh, the, the Osha in, in the Asha, I said Osha, Asha, in A Song of Ice and Fire is badass. She's a great character. She's a fucking fantastic character. Um, as a matter of fact, the Ironborn are, are some of the most interesting parts of the story. Uh, you would think they wouldn't be because they're such a hard-ass culture, but they're great. They're great. Um, all right, so... We're marching to Winterfell... And Stannis has allied himself with a bunch of the Hill clans because a lot of Northern men don't want to bend the knee to Stannis because they're afraid of Roose Bolton. Plus, they've got their own conspiracy going on. They're planning to overthrow him anyway because they love fucking Ned Stark. And they want they hate the fucking Boltons. The Boltons are assholes. But Roose Bolton in the book is way more cunning and evil than the the moron in the show quite frankly and the ramsey in the book i don't know the guy the guy who played him in the show is pretty good was pretty good but he's still no ramsey the book was still worse so they're holed up in winterfell and they've got Frey's there and manderley's and they're starting to fight and shit's starting to go sideways even though they've got the best position in war they're in a castle they can't get fucked with stannis is dead half his half his men aren't even on horseback and in the show, they just got slaughtered. Well, Stannis is one of the best war techni- tech- tacticians in Westeros. Period. And he's going to fucking, he's going to win this one. So he's hanging out by a frozen lake. He's hanging out by a frozen lake. And the theory is he's going to lure them out of Winterfell and lure them onto the frozen lake and then fucking dump everybody in the frozen lake. And which is going to lead to a lot of dead bodies getting raised up by the others later. So that's what's going to happen. He's going to win that victory, but then get his ass beat later when the dead come down to come and massacre everybody. And then a bunch of dead people will rise from the frozen lake that he killed 
in that battle. So I think that's what's going to happen. But in the meantime, they're freezing the deaths. Everything looks bad for Stannis. And this is what George R. R. Martin does. He sets up a scenario to where it looks like there's no way this person can't win. We're going to set up the most perfectest, perfect scenario ever. And then I'm going to fuck it all up. Or I'm going to make it look like somebody's losing. They're about to die and something fucks it all up. Remember this, you know, he calls it a Game of Thrones, a Song of Ice and Fire. George R. R. Martin is a vindictive god playing with his little world, okay? So in the meantime, they're hel- held up, and the Stannis has... Uh, I'm probably boring the shit out of you, but I'm having fun. Stannis has Southern Knights with him and the Northern Hill Clans, and they fucking hate each other. All the Northerners are like, Southern pussies, this is fucking nothing. So here we go. This is one of my favorite speeches. I'm going to... I probably didn't do that very good justice, but who cares? Um, this is no winter up in the, up in the Hills. We say this is autumn. This is how autumn kisses you. I'm going to start that over. I fucked that up. This is no winter up in the Hills. We say that autumn kisses you, but winter fucks you hard. This is why this is only autumn's kiss. And that's, uh, by the way, it's Hugo wool Robin. I'm starting to suspect that you've been Bolton's creature all along. Is this the way of it? Did he send you to us to whisper poison in the king's ears? Hugo, Lord Peapod, if you were a man, I would kill you for that. But my sword is made of too fine a steel to besmirch with Craven's blood. Aye, men are dying. More will die before we see Winterfell. What of it? This is war. Men die in war. That is the way it should be, as it's always been. Corliss responds, Do you want to die, Wool? Hugo, I want to live forever in a land where summer lasts a thousand years. I want a castle in the cloud where I can look down over the world. I want to be six and twenty again. When I was six and twenty, I could fight all day and fuck all night. What men want doesn't matter. Winter is upon us, boy, and winter is death. I would sooner my men die fighting for Ned's little girl than alone and hungry in the snow, weeping tears that freeze on their cheeks. No one sings song of men like that. As for me, I am old. This is my last winter. Let me bathe in Bolton blood before I die. I want to feel it splatter across my face as my axe bites into their into a Bolton skull. I want to lick it off my lips and die with the taste of it on my tongue. Fucking love it. That's why I love A Song of Ice and Fire. Next chill stream, I'll read the longer one, which is The Broken Man, which is the best speech in the whole damn book. But uh, yeah, so if you just watched the show, um, there are 2,102 named characters in these books. Okay, so the Marvel Universe, at least before Disney bought it and before this was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the Marvel Universe had 5,000 characters. A Song of Ice and Fire has damn near half that. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of characters in these books. And it's a deep, good world. I just want him to finish the fucking book. I don't think he's gonna unless he's writing both of them at once right now. Sean Carter, the best Lord of the Rings content ever. Oh, yeah, I read that one. Was uh, Bilbo Baggins uh, by Leonard Nimoy. I disagree, but I don't hate it. Sean Carter for $5. Nicholas Horton. Hail, Gary. The orcs in The Hobbit also didn't speak English, unlike in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. um, I didn't mind that. That, yeah, you know what? That I mean, it didn't bother me as much. But it was a big difference. Uh, I like the black speech. And listen, there is stuff in The Hobbit that's fucking badass. When Galadriel goes and takes on Sauron to save Gandalf and fucking uh, Saruman and Elrond go and fight the Nine, the music for that scene, that that battle is better, as good as any superhero battle ever. That freaking is badass. I could watch that scene over and over again. And then Galadriel gets all, you know, uh, uh, the ring. Is it the ring? What's the Japanese horror movie? 
Why did I say the ring? Something like that. Yeah, she gets all dark and, you know, you could see uh, Peter Jackson's horror roots. Uh, you have no, or go back to the shadow. I love that part. It's fucking great. Uh, and, and some of the battles, like the pale, but the pale orc looked too animated to me. Looked too cartoony to me. But the actors playing the dwarves were brilliant. Richard Armitage and, uh, yeah, the acting was top notch. And that's why The Hobbit is better than the prequels. Maybe that's what I should have titled this. The Hobbit is better than the Star Wars prequels by a mile. Uh, I'll, I'll rewatch The Hobbit a lot. I'll never rewatch the Star Wars prequels. Ever. There's, I mean, it's just, I, no, like the one scene I wanted them to get right, they, they did right. Uh, Yellow Flash writes, shit. What's up, Yellow Flash? Uh, it's all, yeah, the comic book industry is all shit. I completely agree with you. And so is some of my content. Let's be honest. <laughs> What's up, Yellow Flash? Uh, maybe we should get you on, you know, EVS is going to be on next week on, uh, on Friday night tights. And, you know, I mean, it, it, we're going to talk about cyber frog and, and just whatever's going on in pop culture. Uh, we will roll as many guests as we can through Friday night tights. It's a random thing. Uh, I, I'd say last week was the first week I actually planned out. I generally don't plan a lot of times. Oh no, Eric July, I invited earlier too. I'm starting to invite people a week out because I think it, but uh, EVS mes messaged me uh, and yeah, I said, sure. Um, absolutely. Uh, now <clears throat> we'll roll, roll people through, but um, we're going to try to get on some of my patrons and uh, no, you don't have to be a massive channel, but if you want to reach out, uh, the thing is, uh, I mean, it's okay if you reach out. I mean, I'm not always going to say yes. I'm just going to say, that. I don't mean to be a dick, but I'm not always going to say yes. But if you're, I mean, if you've live streamed before and you can keep the flow going, I'm cool. And you don't have to have a channel. Don't even have to ha have a channel, but it's just, it's random. I, I don't plan it out. I don't, ha I should, but I don't, um, probably will eventually, but I don't want it to look polished, you know? Uh, but maybe we get yellow flash with yellow flash. I know I keep saying it, but we need to get you on dude. Uh, Doyle Hargrave for $5 Marjorie, Natalie Dormer storyline pissed me off with huge build up to nothing but a crappy death. Yeah. Be Doyle, because they went off the source material. Marjorie is a great character is a great character played by absolutely perfect casting. Natalie Dormer played her perfect. Well, yeah, look what they did to her bro too. They built him up and they made him a, a nothing. I mean, they just blew him up at the end because they didn't know what to fucking do. And they shocked. And that's when we should have known something was really wrong. Now, it was a good ending. I liked it. Cersei's little smirk at the end, that was fucking great. But in hindsight, yeah, shit started going downhill right there. It did. No. Um, Rickon, dude. How they, how they did Rickon was, don't get me started how they did fucking Rickon. Um, Thorin barely had a beard. Eh, yeah. But the ladies liked him. Remember the hot dwarves? Well, I mean, they couldn't make him look like the back, the backish movies, right? We can't make, I mean, I didn't want the. I know that I know that's kind of what he had in mind, but I, I we didn't need the dwarves to look Disney like either. But they probably should have looked. Eh, I'm fine with it. I didn't have a problem with the pretty dwarves. I didn't. I had a real problem cucking Legolos. That fucking pissed me off. And that was in there. That was straight up in there because well, we need to write something feminist in here because there's a lot of white dudes. There's a lot of this and there's a lot of that. So why don't we take Legolos? And make it so he got, he got cucked by a dwarf. They straight up. Yeah. I mean, like, fuck that. Legolos was cool. He had a dickish dad. Uh, but I, I didn't mind that too much either. It's supposed to be a tragedy. 
the thing is, it ends so sad, you know. Ah. Uh, I didn't think it would end this way, Pippin said. Gandalf, end. No, the journey doesn't end here. Death is just another path, one that we all must take. The gray rain curtain of this world rolls back, and it all turns to silver glass, and then you'll see it. What, Gandalf? See what? White shores and beyond, a far green country under a swift sunrise. And it, you know what? That doesn't even work with, without Howard Shore's music. <laughs> well, that isn't so bad. No. No, it isn't. Love that scene. Love that scene. Welcome, Yellow Flash. Thank you, Doyle. Uh, ben Frail for Australian $2. Thorin barely had a fucking beard. I already read that one, but yes. I mean, like, there's worse things. Like I said, Legolos, Cult. Cuck, bad. Uh, Hail Gary, enjoy your coffee. Thanks for the distraction, says Lassange for $5. Thank you. And thank you for the distraction. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I will do a square up for Friday tomorrow. I plan to do it tonight, but again, those questions get a little salty. So we'll, we'll do one tomorrow or Monday. I'll do it. No, I like what I said earlier. I'll mix it. I'll pepper them in on the Inquisition if there isn't many. Uh, Inquisition tomorrow at 7.45 p.m. Sorry, it's starting late, but we are reviewing Westworld. Uh, and right now, it's the only content that's out there. And maybe this will be a good episode because the last one sucked. The last one straight up sucked. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the super chats. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for the 1,000 likes. Thank you to the over... 1,200 people, 1,300 people are watching a random stream. Thank you to the uh, to the new members. We got five new members. Thank you to the Mod Rodics. I appreciate you. Thank you, Tom, for being here and and Yellow Flash and according to Christy and uh, yeah, Mark Lerzeth, if you're out there, Nihilus Shadow, Chris Persia, Eric K. What's up, my brother? Great, great people. I will see you tomorrow night. I will get back. Uh, I, I'm no joke. I'm it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna go watch Fellowship of the Ring as I go to bed. And I want you all to have a great oh, more and gray gets one at the end. The music made Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, hands down, straight up. Howard Shore, Howard Shore. Uh, I highly recommend getting the vinyl uh album, the special edition colored vinyl albums. They're brilliant, they've got. They're, they're, I mean, they're huge. Uh, you can get Two Towers and Return of the King for pretty cheap. Fellowship, a little pricey. It's a little pricey. Bell to Lauda, Tim F. Yeah, don't forget The Expanse. Watch The Expanse, too. Thank you, Martin Gray. Thank you, everybody. Love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. So remember, uh, not all who wander are lost. And may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. <laughs>